Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Budget Committee meeting for the 11th of March. <clears throat> I'd like to now uh, <clears throat> call the meeting open and do so with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> uh, just uh, like to acknowledge that uh, Councillor Jones has had a function this morning. He, he is in on his way in, but he's had another function to attend, so he'll be here uh, in a matter of course. And uh, Councillor Froloff uh, is away, uh, so I'll just move a motion that we accept a request for leave of absence for Councillor Froloff. Seconded, Councillor Henshin. Those in favour, carried unanimously. Thank you all. I'd like to hand over to Councillor Duff to provide the recognition of our traditional owners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to acknowledge country and the traditional owners of the land where we meet this morning, the Waka Waka people, and acknowledge the elders both past, present and emerging. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any conflicts of interest in today's committee meeting, Councillors? Nothing to disclose. Okay, we'll move on to item five, which is the business on the agenda today. 5.1 is adoption of the draft code of competitive neutrality complaints policy, statutory 006, that can be found at page five on the agenda. Uh, and um, we've got Mr. CEO, uh, did you want to provide us with any uh, introductory comments on that? Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Um, just a, a couple of points. No minutes because this is the first of the new committees and so we tidied up the committee last year. So um, the next one will have the, the minutes from this one in it and run the same sort of process the committee will recommend up. In regard to the policy, this one's, um, uh, if I may use the term, a relatively easy one. It's a, an annual refresh since we've uh, adopted the policy. We've just gone through it very quickly. It is a very statutory regulated policy. Um, it was developed in 2020, uh, renewed last year, and it'll be an annual renewal now as part of the budget process um, each year. The uh, regulation hasn't, the regulation references, or actually nothing in the process has changed, so it's literally just a, a review, an opportunity to refresh, and, um, and it gives guidance on, which is very, very, very um, similar as in identical to the Act process, but uh, the Act says we must have a policy uh, dictating how to make a competitive complaint, neutrality complaint, and so this satisfies that statu statutory requirement. Thank you, Mr CEO. Re it's recommended that the committee recommends to Council that the South Bennett Regional Council Code of Competitive Neutrality Complaints Policy, Statutory 006, be adopted as presented. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, thank you. Second, Councillor Duff. Speakers? we we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you all. 5.2, Draft South Bennett Regional Council Operational Plan, 22-23, Executive Services. That's at page 11. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, committee, we've got the, the new format now, the Onion Operational Plan. So for those watching in the... Uh, may be tuned in, we have a new, uh, we've had a workshop in relation to Council's operational plan for 22-23. Uh, we reformatted that uh, to establish uh, a uh, departmental based uh, operational plan. So each department will have its uh, own operational plan. That operational plan will, con will, will um, set down a number of activities uh, once adopted by Council and they will be linked back to the corporate plan. So for those who are wondering, an operational plan, as it says, is, is basically uh, the <laughs> operationalisation of the corporate plan. Bit of a tongue twister there for a Friday morning. Mr CEO, uh, would you like to give us a run through? I know you've done a lot of work in giving us this new format for the first time. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. So, um, um, yeah. Same same introductory. Uh, uh, we spoke about different um, styles and options. So the on page fourteen of the agenda, what we've done is um, try and think how to um, pull the maintain the integrity of the operational plan and the corporate plan, and then pull the the things that are core functions of council out, so that they would be reported on by exception. Um, 
develop, coordinate and publish Council's annual report and organisational activity in compliance with the legislation. We have statutory requirement to do an annual report every year. So that's referenced as OR2 in the um, corporate plan. And um, basically, so unless there's something by exception, that there wouldn't be a, a running commentary on that every quarter. So um, we've pulled, as a, and this is the draft, it won't be finalised today uh, as per the recommendation. So be improved for inclusion in the operational development plan process. Um, feedback, absolutely not only welcome, but essential to, um, to make sure we're all on the same page as we do this. We will, um, as we go through the process, now start, if this, if this style or format is, is um, what everyone's comfortable with, start pulling all the departments apart. And I suppose the other significant change is rather than running the operational plan in the corporate plan headings, it will be broken up into the department and the various um, elements of the corporate plan that are responsible for each department will be moved into the, corp into the operational plan. And you can see, if I, while I'm using the core function, the first one, strength and maintain, actively contribute to local government associations, advocacy, that gets picked up in a couple of areas. So these will be uh, continued, but definitely two aspects of the corporate plan being OR12 and GR16 rely very heavily to advocacy. And so both of those are aligned to that one um, outcome or objective. So we'll be able to go through, make sure that every aspect of the corporate plan, with it being in the department's uh, format now rather than in, in its own, um, um, I, I suppose, corporate plan stream, there is an accountable department. So anything that falls within the department, that department is accountable. And where there's cross-departmental uh, requirements, it will work a, that the responsible department is, res well, is responsible. That's good English. but. There is a responsible department to coordinate and deliver deliver the outcome. So uh, where we've got um, things as core, they can be moved around quite easily. And on page 15, and one slipped over to 16, one of the ones is um, uh, GR16, which is support the development of an agricultural land for. And this was a, a really good example of the of the conversations that have been ongoing about how to make this a little bit more streamlined and more effective. Uh, support the development of agricultural land and product asset mapping program, right area, GR4, it also is GR4 community, it relates to that. In the current, in this year's current operational plan, um, I've been as uh, Officer CEO filling in against that, but we've been just listing all the ministerial and advocacy um, appointments that we've had, met with Minister De Brenny, met with Minister Ferner, met with Tisby, whoever, whichever the case may be. So it's actually ended up more as, a, as the reporting against it and its stream. It's ended up more as a, um, as a, as a, a report on what advocacy has been undertaken. Um, where this is quite, and the discussions we've had, so the adverse um, action plan that Boedo did in partnership with Council last financial year, um, the discussions with the current flood of getting that agricultural mapping across the community for land, it really probably sits better in community, for example, and now's a great time to start to tidy up these. So even in the corporate plan, if it needs to be strengthened up, we do the annual review when we can come to June, July, whether we need to, and council can by resolution change its corporate plan at any point. But it's always good to tie it in with an annual review. Is the corporate plan, are the bits sitting, where they, are they worded as well? But for my mind, and, and certainly as a, as a suggestion today, that one would be then taken out and would be dropped into community and the community's department would be responsible, would be the accountable department responsible for delivering that project. Um, now, it would certainly involve some advocacy, but it would also actually get it back to where it should be, which is getting a practical project to deliver agricultural mapping for rural properties across the region. So when we have the disaster, now with the disaster management, with um, the recovery committee, the, the disaster management committee, the LDMG, there's probably an input from them. So you'd have infrastructure, you would have all those different departments, but uh, the communities department would be responsible for the delivery of this in this next financial year. So the projects, uh, things that council particularly wants to see done that are a little bit out of, out of not core business uh, goes into the project new activities. Um, we still would need to have a think about, we have start date, finish date, and we'll start to, once we, if everyone's comfortable with this format, 
I line it up as we go through to the budget source. Where, where's the where's the money? And um, yeah, it'll, I, I think and as it's come together, and I would acknowledge Susan's department and particularly Carolyn, Manager Nudson. Um, this has been a joint effort on on thinking about how we how we turn this this format to our own needs. And um, yeah, it's really mad, happy to take questions and direction and particularly feedback as to is there anything missing and we got the bits and, and as we go through this as each of the committee meetings this won't be um, finalized until it goes to an ordinary meeting for adoption which will be around May June um, but yeah certainly is if as we go through and someone spots because you can read things a hundred times and then on the hundredth and one time you'll pick oh that probably there's a typo in it or this should be there um, yeah, as we go through, happy to take feedback at any time as to where bits should be. Thank you, Mr. CEO. We'll have a roundtable discussion on this one to commence. Uh, so, councillors, uh, feedback in relation to the format and content. Councillor Duff. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm really, really happy that we're going down this path of starting the whole process with the corporate plan and the operational plan, looking at all of that and then moving into the budget process because I've always um, thought that there was a bit of... Um, there was no real linkage when we talked about the budget back to the corporate plan and the operational plan, but now it's done very strategically and very um, methodically. But I just wanted to ask the question around, so the example that you just gave around the community leading, for example, the advocacy and the mapping with with the, um, and through Alan Broom and the Baido, so that probably sits under rural resilience. So I just wanted, where um, the council portfolios align with with the different departments is that still just going to be um, the same, or we like I would just so I'm mostly under my portfolio mostly sits under um, the end in properties, and so then would would how's the, just wondering with the portfolios how you see that rolling out. Thanks, Councillor. Um, the portfolio. So in the in the org review reports, I've just put a paragraph, and I'll probably drop that off for the March ordinary while we finalise the managerial positions. Um, as we as we roll into the new financial year, there will be a, a formal report brought back, brought, brought back to Council on um, how we wish to allocate portfolios, and it would be. I think the suggestion that has, I've put up in the past, which is purely a suggestion, is is um, still at this point because now finalises two councillors per department and then mayor, um, sort of overarching. But as I said, at the moment we've got portfolios. Um, succinctly and simply, yeah, I would. It would be really good to have the the portfolios aligned to the departments and to like at least two. Well, I would say two councillors. Um, so whether the office of the CEO and the mayor, uh, which would make a, a natural synergy as well in that space, uh, office of the mayor, office of the CEO and exec, um, but also, um, uh, yeah, aligning that. So I'm probably, where am I going? The, the, so the real resilience, you've got communities, so Boido, so this one, this one would sit in communities, so if your portfolio didn't change very much at all, I would think it would still sit with community, but that's that's the discussion that's yet to be had. But but yeah, certainly um, between now and between now and 30 June, once once we settle on those managers' positions this week, and then we have the continued discussion about service delivery under each department, um, there would be the finalisation would have the portfolios ready to roll for July. Yeah, thank you, Mr. CEO. So in terms of our process, councillor. Uh, Certainly the corporate plan, uh, the operational plan uh, flows out of that. Um, the budget flows out of the operational plan. Uh, we'll have to align. We are working to align our structure, as everyone knows, our organisational structure uh, similarly to this. Um, and then out of that, the the, um, one, the following stage would be clearly for us to consider our, our, um, our portfolios. So then how do we most effectively... Uh, how do we set up a portfolio, uh, a suite of portfolios that is are going to allow, that is going to be clearly aligned with and connected to the corporate plan and this operational plan, and and um, and making sure that we then have a reporting process through our standing committees that similarly aligns that. So uh, that'll be a discussion we have to have uh, in in coming months, as Mr. CEO said. Once we get this better down, we get the budget uh, sorted out, we get the uh, organisational structure worked through and resolved. We can then turn our mind to how we'd like to set our portfolios moving forward. 
Yeah, it's a good discussion to have. Yeah, and very much um, while Mr. CEO shared some concepts, uh, we haven't had a chance to really discuss it at any length, and we're very much just looking to put out a clean slate on the table to council and say, okay, how do you want to structure this council so we can get better uh, linkage and underpinning of the development of the implementation of the corporate plan through those portfolios, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, uh, and is that sort of answer yeah, the question? Yes, happy, yeah. happy with that process. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks, Councillor. CEO. Yeah, thanks, Mr CEO. Okay, uh, further format content for the proposed exec services. An ED operational plan now. Everyone's fairly comfortable with what we've got at this point in time. Okay, uh, so we'll seek a. Um, sorry, yep, sorry. Councillor Schumacher. Yeah, my only thinking is as we've discussed, it's very draft, so if there's still areas that we'd like to add or, or consider changing. Um, the one question I did have, uh, I'm not sure I've actually seen Council's strategic human resource management plan. Um, so we'd probably like to understand a little bit more about what that actually um, includes and if there is an opportunity to review that plan as it currently sits. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, no, you, you won't have, Councillor. There's, um, I've actually got two copies here. One's an old one from when I first started here, which would be 17, 18, uh, that we panel beat and then it's been um, PNC developed up a draft one last year, and which has been which is still a work in progress. One of the um, is it in the where did we put that second? Cool. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, no, it will come back uh, through a um, standard committee process, so like a effectively the government's framework for the policies. So yeah, so um, so yeah, no. Why you haven't seen it is. Is not that we're not happy with it, but yeah, it, it's still a work in progress. And with a number of the strategies, uh, as we're doing it internally, we're just a little bit slower than than what we we could otherwise be. But which is not a bad thing. So we're developing it up. So it's set for a, a finalisation in this next financial year, uh, as we go through some of those other organisational um, cultural changes and and continued improvement and development. So. Yeah, short answer is it'll come back through its normal governance process and policy and it'll be tabled for, for consideration and adoption. Um, and the other one I just wanted to ask about was in relation to the um, staff uh, survey, the engagement survey and the work that's happening there. Should we recognise and acknowledge that as a, as a core activity or a new activity um, this year? Certainly I'm very keen to benchmark what we had last year and even dig a little bit deeper in some of those findings. I know we really didn't get a lot of time to do that in the chain bath, so we'd probably really like to understand, have some conversations about um, how we can equip and resource the organisation to really um, support our people and their needs. Yeah, we're happy and probably if um, we had planned to, we could either, yeah, we'll have a, we can happily write that in. Um, yeah, it was just one of those, and these are the these are the sorts of things. You know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know, and you know sometimes what you think you know, but you really don't. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, we, we'll we'll make a reference, Mayor, if that suits, and we'll put it in because we're planning to do it. So yeah, I, I, whether we just yeah. identify it, yeah. I'm, uh, by no means am I being critical. Just using the opportunity to provide feedback. Um, and the other thing I did want to highlight, I've seen. A lot of councils are doing snapshots of their annual reports, um, which are really like a one or two pages. Uh, I've seen Gladstone's doing a lot of community profiling, so they're sharing a, a snapshot from various areas of their team. I know we've done a lot of work on the fact sheets, but this is probably more about communicating to our community um, some of some of the, the stories and the things that council is actually working on. Um, I just wondered, in terms of that annual report, because it is such a bulky document, is there an opportunity to consider a smaller condensed snapshot um, that we can kind of really promote uh, or share with our community, either through our rates notices process or just to try to com improve that understanding of what your council actually does? 
Uh, yeah, we will certainly give it our best to British. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. And there's a couple others because, like, it's it's uh, I use the old one team concept, but um, there's a there's a few people doing some really good space, and these are the faces and the people behind uh, the rubbish. LJQ's done a couple of really good campaigns, and there was a previous discussion in the chamber at one of the standing committees about a community satisfaction survey. I haven't yet done it. It's just on the. It's sort of be on the list of things to do. But LJQ has, over the years, run their own community satisfaction survey for the state and local governments' ranking as in trust versus other levels of government. Once upon a time, besides doing the statewide one, they used to allow councils the opportunity to participate in. Um, you could actually do it in your own area. I haven't seen that for a long time, so I don't know whether we've just missed it or it's still, but anyway, for Explore for next year. Um, that would come at a cost, but then we would bring that up as a the thing when we get into the budget uh, with some of these things, if we set, um, probably jumping ahead, but set, set core functions based on the operational plan, then if one of these opportunities or project, we've got the standing committee, so we'll bring it through and say, okay, it's going to cost us $20,000 to hook onto the LGAQ Community Service Satisfaction Survey, but it'll be really be good because it'll do X, Y, Z, it'll deliver X, Y, Z. So, okay, yeah, we make a, an allocation of 20000 so then it becomes a specific specific discussion point rather than, oh, yeah, we might do this or might not do that next year. Um, but, yeah, so, it's, yeah, no, short answer, long, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr CEO. And it's uh, <clears throat> probably could, uh, some of the core activities uh, will require some, I suppose, uh, a little bit of springboarding to get them going moving forward to take us from where we are and to where we want to be. So it might be that that could be folded into or picked up as part of core activity OR10 in terms of proactive strategic delivery of communications. Yeah, and then it becomes a process. Once established, it could then become an ongoing process of council to deliver that through the format and the process that council sees fit, perhaps, yeah. And certainly, Mayor, as we try different things, if we, if we hooked onto LJQ and we got nice big, like, I'll just make this up, so please don't quote it as gospel, but we got nice big, broad, inf interesting information, but it wasn't terribly useful. Okay, well, the intent was good and it gives us a starting point, but we'll do something different next year. And so that's that springboarding, yeah, very, yeah, mm. no, totally. Yeah, thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor Potter. Yeah, thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Look, there seems to be a lot of things here, um, see, Mr. Um, Mr CEO, and I, my concern is that there's too much on the plate of your office considering your staffing amounts. And um, I'm just wondering whether some of this stuff can be moved into other areas because you've got a lot of uh, my portfolio stuff in here as well. So, And I'm just curious as to seriously whether this is manageable for you with your staffing levels and whether we need to that needs to be adjusted somehow that's really kind councillor <laughs> um i'm lost for words um the the i think it, in this early stages yeah and that's and that's the conversation of we we've, we've been having about how do we build this into a not everything's done every year the taking a GR16 out, I think, would be a really good thing uh, for me because we've got no active involvement in that space, so it would be something new um, with the stuff. Actually, I was going to save it up for the budget, but just, just and this is where lies, damn lies in statistics, um, with uh, coordinator Wilson leaving last year and then um, the recruitment for the coordinator and then the backfilling of the coordinator's position, which was... Um, uh, the executive assistant now that we've just got, the communications officer and um, having the seconded uh, economic development officer, but even in just pure vacancies, over 18 months as recruitment processes have gone through, I've actually had one FTE missing for 14 months in that period of time. Now, it's not a bad thing, it's just recruitment is, is difficult, as we all know, um, on occasions and... It's, yeah, it's, you just adapt and, and manage and manage the resources you have. Um, I think that will be the discussion, Mayor, as we go through and we have a look at the, as the complete document uh, as to who's doing what and what's able to be delivered in the year and we've got the different departments. Um, but, yeah, certainly it is what opportunities there are. 
Um, and actually, I, I would think, I won't say it's a lighter workload, but with not having to report on the core or double up or do a different reporting on the core activities unless there's an exception, a lot of the core activities are, do, are reported on through the standing committees, the councillor portfolio reports, the statistics every month. The standing committees pick up a lot of the core reporting. So um, this will remove one duplication in that space, which I think will be actually helpful. Yeah, thanks, Mr. CEO. You're comfortable with that, Councillor Potter, at this stage? Yeah, work in progress. Okay, well, uh, any further comments, councillors, anything further to add? Happy to move, uh, move on with this one. Okay. Sorry, just one question. Um, we had talked about assigning, so I've read the mission here um, for executive services to effectively plan, manage and deliver council services and regulatory responsibilities to and on behalf of the organisation. Um, I just wanted to understand how those missions are, are actually developed across um, the various different departments. And we did talk about setting some KPIs for each area, you know, in terms of um, our aspirational targets and, and opportunities to sort of capture our learnings throughout the year. So mm -hmm. they're probably my two questions just in terms of the mission and in terms of KPIs, like I would like to see us just develop, you know, three key KPIs for each department that we include in our operational plan, one certainly aspirational and, and two that are, are more targeted um, at the outcomes that we'd like to see. Uh, further to Councillor Potter's conversation uh, comments, like I, I certainly recognise what you're saying, Councillor Potter, but um, I've really appreciated this year the opportunity to work with CEO Mark in that regional development space. I think actually considering um, the very limited zero resources in regional development, we've actually kicked some extraordinary goals. So I think that we can actually do a lot with. Um, a little and I think next year we are gearing up so we will have more resources in this area which we haven't had before so I think I'm quite comfortable with the lot workload. So mission and KPIs, CEO. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mission is our first go at taking it out of, um, I think it was organisational, I well, think, organised. So literally we're pulling the stuff out of the corporate plan and then trying to panel beat it into a more operational language. So, and we will do that for each of the, so we've got, um, um, and again, this is this is where the feedback is, and um, no, absolutely, no criticism or anything anyone's saying is it's it's not taken as that. It's it's more than welcomed. Um, so we get it on the right page. So we're pulling, trying to put, well, not trying to, but we're looking at how we panel beat the um, like organisational excellence is an organisation that is char characterised by effective leadership, responsible management, good governance and quality service delivery. So how do we operationalise that into besides it being a motherhood statement? So there will be further work in all these and across all the departments and there will probably be um, or possibly be more than one mission for departments as, as we... Whether we just pull them to lead agencies or lead departments in each of these areas, and because um, we've only got, if you count the three departments plus the, the executive, um, there's only four and there's five categories. So, um, yeah, so, so that's the mission. So it's just literally starting to pull it out of the corp. Um, so if we don't like the mission, uh, actually the good thing will be, and that's what I say, with the corporate plan review, we can go back and just start to, to refine the corporate plan to do what we are. KPIs, yep, uh, hasn't been lost. Um, do we know how to how to articulate them in this format yet? No, um, but yeah, it's 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 the it's the whip for us as we as we go through. Probably uh, one of the ones that I've certainly I'll use um, uh, the water area. They have the Australian Water Quality Guidelines, and they do a lot of reporting already. And and one of my my dreams, I suppose, if I can use that terminology, is to have our annual reporting aligned to the things that we have to statutory report on anyway. How many main breaks per kilometre, how many... And, and again, I suppose I go back to that, um, whether we need to, to panel beat the standing committee reports a little bit, but where it best sits, but have that for the annual report. If we're doing the water and sewage guys do a massive amount of work uh, every year developing their KPIs for the state and then delivering on their KPIs states through the quality water drinking and 
uh, wastewater guidelines. Um, if we can align what we're doing to that so we're not doubling up. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mr. CEO, just if I could add some comments, Councillor, before we come back to you. Um, just in terms of um, the, the mission, uh, if you could perhaps make notes. <coughs> It would be, it, I think it would be um, worthwhile, Council, considering extending out that mission statement to incorporate the role of your area in supporting Council advocacy and also in uh, regional development, supporting regional development. Now, I might have the exact words, but advocacy and regional development, I think, need to be built into that mission statement. Because if you look at your activities, there's a big emphasis on those two areas there. Um, and the other one was just in terms of that reporting and KPIs, it would be, yeah, look forward to setting up a process whereby we could have those standing committees, whereby this operational plan, a reporting model that is attached to this operational plan could come back. And we do our budget revision on a quarterly basis. And I'm wondering whether that's something Council would like to consider. Would you like to see quarterly operational plan implementation reports come back? Um, that include KPIs, perhaps, as well as an update on the implementation of these. So we line it to our budget reporting cycle. The operational plan reporting gets aligned to the budget reporting. Just a suggestion, just a, a conversation starter at this stage. So keen to hear your thoughts on that, and we'll come back to Councillor Schumacher. Yeah, Thank certainly, you. Mayor. Thank you. And that's and that's um, how do we know that the current mechanism isn't working properly? Because that's that very robust document we put together for you every every quarter. Um, so. I think there's a much more effective way of delivering that reporting on a quarterly basis, and absolutely, uh, my preference wouldn't be to do monthly, but certainly that quarterly report so we've got something substantive and, and relevant. And yeah, absolutely uh, agree, Mayor, that we'd do it on a quarterly basis. And this would this format now would give us the opportunity to, to do that um, at each standing committee. So each each general manager or, head or or lead could report on their own implementation and KPIs, rather than having one bulk report um, come to the exec services. One, do you think? Yeah, every every yeah every quarter. Yeah, break it because it'll be broken up into the departments, and so it'll be actually yeah. How do you eat the elephant one bite at a time? It'll be bite-sized chunks, and so it'll have a lot more, well, touch wood. It'll have a lot more relevance. So, Shoemaker. Uh, yes, my my question about the mission statement. Um, certainly not. Uh, to ins insinuate that I don't like it, uh, CEO Mark. It's just, I think that is a great opportunity to bring the team along with for the discussion. So um, in terms of actually realising the corporate plan and discussing that strategic framework, like I probably just want to understand, like are there opportunities for your teams to get together and actually hash out some of these mission statements so that everybody in the organisation has some ownership over the corporate plan? Like. I do see it as a bit of an opportunity across the departments and welcome your feedback in that regard. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, it it's, will be, um, to a degree, I suppose, in the first instance, something will be penciled in so we've got something to talk about um, rather than starting from a blank slate. But, yeah, yeah, as we, as we grow in maturity in this space, yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about our core values, um, one of them being unite, you know, and that opportunity to really unite our people in um, this journey that we're taking together. I think it's a, a good thing to start almost with a bit of a blank canvas and have that conversation with our people about how does our team fit and support and start from that position. I think it's a really exciting way to um, build culture. Okay. Uh, Rodio. Some good, some good points there. Uh, we ha we're happy to continue through it. Our uh, recommendation is that the committee recommends to council that the draft South Bennett Regional Council Operational Plan 2223 for executive services uh, be approved for inclusion in the operational plan development process for 2022-23. We have a mover, Councillor Duff, thank you. Second, Councillor Potter. Uh, further speakers? No, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you all. We'll now move on to the final item on the agenda, which is the draft 2022-23 budget for executive services. Um, that's at page 17. Um, and I, I think we'll we'll you know, we'll go around the table and have a uh, an open discussion on this, and then we'll look to get something uh, moved uh, through the committee meeting. Uh, just in terms of process, uh, 
for those who might be engaged today, uh, Council has been through a workshop where we've had uh, the Executive Services budget presented to us uh, and give, be given, been given a briefing in relation to the contents of that. Uh, so Council has been uh, informed as to this budget uh, previously. Uh, we've then had uh, an opportunity for councillors to, to digest that and provide some feedback uh, to our CEO as this is his budget area. Um, and then the purpose of today is to work through uh, each of the items in that budget, uh, have a discussion in relation to that, seek further feedback, make recommendations, um, and to, uh, to then look to uh, resolve something that can then go up and form part of the overall, the overall budget for the complete organisation. Uh, so it's part of a building block, a process, it's a building block process, one stage at a time with each department. We'll get to the end when we have a full council budget and then we have that, we'll have an opportunity to come back and again tweak those budgets if we need to, depending on how the bottom line uh, ends up once we've been through that process over coming weeks. So money for the community, that's, uh, that's our process. And of course, I'd like to acknowledge our CEO and our staff for the work that they've put in assisting us with establishing this process. It is, it is an innovative process. Um, it's not one that is uh, undertaken by too many councils across Queensland in terms of having these open public forums whereby we discuss um, the detail of, of the budget uh, in, uh, in that open community forum, but very much part of Council's corporate plan uh, to, uh, to engage with community. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the introductory comments. Um, Mr CEO, I think we've been all, all been given a nice big coloured uh, spreadsheet, uh, which includes the full breakdown of the budget, uh, and also uh, some explanatory, explanatory comments in relation to some key items that Council asked to have some detail on. Uh, now, Again, for those watching, we are working on a zero-based budgeting process, and by no means are we at a, a level of advanced sophistication in relation to that, but we are working through that process. Um, zero-based budgeting basically means we start with a clean slate, we start with a blank canvas, uh, and we work the budget up from there. So it's not about taking um, uh, last year's budget and simply adding a percentage increase. It's about looking at what are the areas uh, about looking at what are the resources required in each department and then putting, attaching uh, the relevant dollars to that. So it's a very much a, a blank canvas and building up the zero base budgeting process. And uh, this is our second year of doing it. And uh, we uh, certainly, uh, it's a work in progress where we're getting better each year. Um, and I'm sure after another year or two, we'll have that pretty well fine tuned. So thanks to the staff uh, for your assistance in that. Uh, so that being the case, uh, has everyone got that large A3 spreadsheet that our CEO has provided? Uh, I'd suggest if we can perhaps work through that one line at a time. Um, some of them we can just skip through fairly quickly. We'll note that in the report it does identify that some of the um, people and culture costs in relation to particularly employee on costs and other things uh, may need to be adjusted in, into the future uh, because some of those things we haven't established. So um, the enterprise bargaining arrangement is still to be worked through uh, after, after January. Um, so so that, that will be a process next year. Um, at the start of next coming year, there's a process there. So the second six months of the, uh, of the budget is yet to be determined depending on how that, that, where that lands. Um, but at this stage, we'll get something down and then we can always do a revision of that later on uh, before the budget's finalised and perhaps uh, year, half yearly, we may need to revise that again, depending on the EBA outcomes. Okay, so just to put that in context, um, Mr CEO, I think, uh, would you like to add uh, any preliminary comments before we start going around the table? Thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. There's, there's probably just a um, couple. There's two significant items that... Um, and certainly there is a little bit, and the line by line, uh, very happy to do because I think there's a, um, probably about another 113 odd that can come out um, and adjust it So in, in the first run through. So this literally, this is our first run through of the, of the budget and then we continue to refine it. The LGAQ, uh, the two extraordinary items that are actually not an increase, even though they'll show us an increase in this, because they've been moved from another section. For some reason or other, the LGAQ subscription each year sits um, over in corporate, and which is peculiar because, well, it's historic, not peculiar, actually unfair. 
Um, it's we do the uh, the work with LGIQ, the conferences, and everything else. So there's 135,000 there that is a, just a contra entry. So it's been moved from corporate to us. So it'll drop in corporate uh, when you see the whole budget and it's gone into us. There's um, two staff positions. One's the um, grant funded PHN Youth Mental Health Coordinator. There's three months of funding uh, associated with that. So there's three months. So last year when we did the budget, that position wasn't in place. It didn't start to September. So it's been a 12 months of uh, secondment from PHN and it's been grant funded on the way through. So it cancels itself out, but it will show as an increase on last year's budget. And there's also one other staff member, uh, which is in that audit compliance uh, grants based senior grants officer has been moved from an infrastructure department in the second quarter review this year that won't show in, in last year's original budget. So those two positions with on cost um, total up 154,000. So again, whilst it looks like an increase, they're actually contra movements within the organisation. So they, they net each other out. So that, um, um, that, that's, they're the two extraordinary ones. And then, yeah, just, just happy to work through it, Mayor, and um, we'll go from there. Thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Well, we might start start at the beginning. Um, so on the first page, we've got uh, executive services. Uh, we can see the revenue items there. Anything to any comments there? I'll just I'll just I'll, I think I'll just lead and work us through, and then please just uh, hit put your light on, councillors, if you want to interject. Uh, okay, nothing there in grants, subsidies, contributions, uh, donations uh, coming through there, Mr. CEO. Um, Kerry, anything to explain on those donations? We've got that um, same as seven thousand and five thousand. Yeah, um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, those ones generally um, consist of things like if we have donations for the Australia Day awards, um, and the other one I think with the. Um, yeah, there's probably not too much in there. Just depends on what events and things we have that we then have donations that go through. We're happy to leave. Yeah, leave leave that as is, as per last year, twelve thousand dollars again. Twenty two, twenty three. Kerry, your advice wouldn't be to change that at this stage, or general manager. Um, I mean the the donations other so for the five thousand that would nearly be consistent year on year because that has to do with the mayor's. Um, Christmas breakfast and that sort of thing. Um, so the only thing you could potentially do, it just depends on what donations we want to do out of that 7,000. That would be your only space potentially if there's, depending on what we want to do next year. Okay. Nitting up to 10, Mr. CEO suggesting. Happy to do that? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just, if we can just you put your light on by exception, if you're not happy, just uh, interject, but we'll just roll through. So, uh, Kerry, we've got that. We'll bring that back to 10,000 from 12. Thanks, Mr. CEO. Um, okay, let's go on to employee benefits uh, for exec services. Uh, we've got the senior grants officer, uh, that contra movement there, plus the one plus a 1.25%, which is just a, a estimated notional allocation for EBA at this stage that as I said is still to be clarified so don't take that as a given um, 505794 uh, 20,000 for allowances 235651 for on cost expenses total of 761445 in the 2122 Mr CEO uh, 21 22, uh, would we be looking just to, to leave that at that figure 761445. Any adjustments? Yeah, no, Mayor. There's there's very little. Um, the the staffing positions we sent around. There's very little movement that we can do in staffing, lest you lose a spot. So as as I said, with um, vacancies, you tend to sometimes, and we only budget for forty four weeks. Um, the on costs run at about fifty percent, forty six to fifty percent, given whatever happens in the year, and that picks yep. up by your compliance. I mean, yep. it is if we if we if we're fully staffed, that will be the cost is the cost of the one point two five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Sir, actually, confusing you, Council. I'm looking at the wrong spreadsheet yeah. there. I've got the old one here, but I've got the the new one here. Yeah. So we've got yeah, we picked up the grand audit officer, haven't we? That's right. Yep. Yep. And we've got that in the on costs. Yep. Sorry. And three months of the PHN. So the total there. Is nine fifty four four six seven. My so sincere I, apologies, Council. Yeah. I, through you, Mr. Mayor, I did have a question about that. I just noticed on the 
income statement on page 18 of the agenda. Um, I was trying to understand, uh, in the notes it says, Youth Mental Health Officer for three months offset by grant. I wanted to understand, at the top we've got 27,000 there in grant subsidies and contributions and donations. So is that 27,000 the grant offsetting that Youth Mental Health Officer? Or is that, so we got only 27,000 to employ that Youth Mental Health Officer next year? Yeah, the the um, grant was split over, so we had a hundred and twenty thousand out of the entire grant, and that was for that project. So we took uh, a chunk of it for last year for the program, and so the final three months was so there was always well, not was always, but there was offset costs from council. So there would be give or take probably about oh, what's that? Um, Because it's got the variance of 252508 on the sheet. So I was just trying to understand, is that the cost to employ the youth mental health officer for the year that's offset by 27,000 or? Yeah, what, with. What is that 252508? Which, which, where are you, Council? I'm sorry. So, so I'm on the income statement. Oh, yep, yep. On page 18 of the agenda. I was okay. just trying, because we're working through the employee benefits. <laughs> So I was just trying to understand the youth mental health officer. It says we've got a variance of two hundred and fifty-two thousand five hundred and eight dollars, and it says youth health, mental health officer for three months offset by grant. We've only recognised twenty-seven thousand in the grant. Yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to understand how is that two fifty-two. Who is, is that the cost of the youth mental health? No, 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 no. That's that's can, part can of I, it. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. go. You Very go. Clarify, yeah, that, that also includes the transfer of the grant audit officer okay, from so infrastructure across to exec. Yeah. So the grant audit officer, we're only paying for three months for the youth mental health officer. Yeah. So the cost of that is included in that 252. So the 252 includes largely the infrastructure grant audit officer. Is that what you're saying? And the 1.25. Yeah. So so the difference in wages from one year to the next. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm with you. I, I just. Yeah. Was, I'm just I was. Trying, cause it's quite no, a, that's right. I was looking at the wrong sheet. Quite a significant yeah. jump. Oh, yep. And we're working through employee benefits here. So so the um, so the thing that will compromise. Uh, compose of the total difference in wages is okay so we've had a couple of staff members in the section that hit um, top of band and rolled into the next increment or next band so there would be natural growth there's uh, the 1.1 and a quarter um, EBA rise and then there's um, approximately 154,000 between the two positions now I won't I won't commit to that to the dollar but around that 150 160,000 between the two positions which didn't show in last year's budget which shows against this year's budget we don't quite recover the full amount for the PHN because we're in the last three months so the wages will be slightly out I think it's about five six thousand dollar gap um, between what's left of the grant and what's left of the wages um, so yeah so the 252 will be made up of increment uh, changes within within the within the awards, uh, the EBA one and a quarter, the senior grants officer, the PHN for three months, and I think that's about it. That's it, Mr. C. Yeah, so that, that covers, and that's for saying like, with with the, well, where I was going with the bar changing positions or, or losing a spot, the wages are the wages. Yeah, no, I understand that. I was just trying to understand it's a $252,000 variance um, and, yeah, I, I can see it's offset by a grant but the grant is only 27000 so there's a big difference between two fifty two and 27000 So, So, so with, the, uh, with the senior grants officer, the funding for that wage bill used to come out of infrastructure. It was moved across. So that's – sorry, I should have been more clear – that was um, where that came out of infrastructure. So there's a, which you can't see here today, there's a corresponding drop in that bucket and it comes over here and then the rest of it is just made up with those increment rises and all the EBA rise. 
yeah, yeah. And the the three months program, I think it's about thirty three to twenty seven. From just going straight off the top of my head, so so uh, we haven't budgeted, and that's a and that would be one of the ones that would come back in its own separate report is that role once we get past September and, and conscious we're dealing with people, but certainly we've had discussions. Where does that role sit? What do we do with it if we don't have funding? Okay, so do we just let it slide under the ocean and pick up those services somewhere else? So that's a conversation for, for down the track. Yeah, thanks, Mr. CEO. Yeah, yeah that 252 is a... a, a um, accumulation of exec services, uh, people and culture and economic development um, as well, isn't it? Yeah, with, with those um, EBA rises and incremental um, increases in accordance with the award. So, yeah, we, we're comfortable with that. We're comfortable to move on. Employee benefits for exec Any further questions on employee benefits for exec services? No? Okay, well, let's, let's keep going then. Move down uh, on the first page to materials. So you can see that there. Over to the second page, you can see that totals up uh, to three hundred and four thousand eight hundred dollars in total, which is a hundred and thirty-five thousand dollar increase on last year, which was one hundred and sixty-nine eight hundred. Um, but Mr. CEO, as we're doing zero-based budgeting, can yep, you give no, some explanation no. of what makes that up. Thank Thanks, you. Mayor. So, so the advertising. So actually, we have room to, um, and with some of the feedback, appreciate it. So we've gone back through all these and had a had a look. Um, very similar but different as far as uh, some of the concepts. Uh, it's a recommendation that, uh, well, recommendation, but if we need to move back, so with the advertising, we, we everything from the, um, the, the weekly radio ads through the page four in the papers, through the public notices, through um, the media that we do for corporate media, marketing uh, tends to be... Um, uh, a little bit like the the well, we haven't had one this year, this financial year again. But the festival of the dams and, and different bits and pieces, so they they tend to move about and as far as. So we've dropped back in that space a lot, as you can see by the actuals over this last twelve months. The marketing of the organisation, uh, general meeting expenses are literally what they what they say. And again, we've we've pulled really tight on that space. Deputations and delegations. Now, again, without sounding like we blame COVID for everything, we, because we've not had people moving around, and it will be still, we really have pulled back on on um, hosting um, hosting things. Out of these, um, the Japanese exchange students, for for example, when they would be coming over, there would be like uh, presentations and um, catering and different events that would happen for Council's um, sister city. So that hasn't happened for the last two years, so that's that's one. General operations is, again, literally that, just um, um, everything from uh, we bring our own coffee through to um, pulling back everywhere we can. So uh, yeah, probably if I cut to the chase, um, having a bit of a look at what we would spend and what we traditionally spend, we would recommend, and if we give these as a starter and certainly taking your feedback on board, Probably I'd like to keep um, advertising at about 73. Uh, I know it's, it's very similar to what you sent through, but um, we can drop back uh, 17, I think it is there. Uh, marketing, we can easily drop the seven and a half on, on the marketing. Um, and then if there's specific, if, if council does have a, an energy summit or something that it wants to do or some specific project, well, we can consider that as part of the project budget. but. We haven't been doing those sorts of events, so we will pull right back. General meeting expenses would recommend we drop back to four. Um, we we can carry um, with what we're doing now, and particularly with councillors, and would acknowledge um, because it's these little things that people often talk about. But I can't bar the very odd occasion now we haven't catered for a meal, so um, we pull that one back to four. Um, delegations and deputations probably like to keep at 2,000 because I would imagine we would start seeing a little bit more movement of people coming through in this next year. And general operations, again, with the movement of people, and I know there's been some suggestions of dropping it back a little bit more. If we took that back to 28, or if we had to go back a little bit further, and, uh, no less than 20, because I think um, 
We've really been running at less than half pace in that space because of the lack of movement around and so uh, happy for the discussion about it. But um, I'm just envisaging we will get um, more activity in this next 12 months and I just think anything less than 20 we're going to go over as we look at historic spend. But yeah, very happy to um, to take. That would pull back about 56,300 out of that whole section. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Mr. CEO, sorry, just that 135,000 again on subscriptions. Um, that's L that is LGAQ. So we pay LGAQ 135,000. Yep. yep, correct. And that's, as I said, and that one, even though it shows an increase in mine, it'll be a corresponding drop in uh, Susan's budget. Yep. And just over the page, the catering of nine and a half, we haven't spent anything this year on catering. Um, can we? Can we drop that out? Do we need that? I mean, we're yeah. going to have that in the general operations or yeah. deputations. You can move it back. Um, again, as we as we start to do things, um, do we want to keep? So, do we keep fifteen hundred in there? Do we keep a? We I would suggest we keep a nominal amount. Yep. So, um, because there are occasions where we have deputations, we have ministers, we have somebody turns up. So, so um, rather than us scratching our heads and trying to find a budget. Um, so there needs to be something in there, okay. but um, yeah, it, that yeah certainly that can. And again, um, uh, councillors can probably testify. The um, staff have pulled. We've pulled extremely tight in this space, and um, we don't spend anything we don't have to. Mm. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Okay, Councillor Potter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So that catering covers. So if we've got a visiting council, um, you know, and recipro reciprocating um, visits and things like that, that covers their meals as well as. We pay for them. We we out of either the caterings or the or the gen ops, depending on where we've got money. So yeah, but that would come out of that catering. So yeah. So if we're going to put on a a, a barbie or um, well, not a barbie, but a meal for a visiting council, um, that would come out of these areas. Out, out of this this bucket. Thank you. Okay, back to fifteen hundred for catering. Um, okay, so just to summarise, CEO is suggesting that um, materials could come from ninety back to seventy three, advertising seventeen and a half back to ten, marketing. Sorry, I'm on the wrong. Sorry, uh, start again. Uh, Advertising, I have to use my ruler. Advertising, yeah, from 90 to 73. Marketing, 17 and a half to 10. General meeting expenses from six back to four. Deputations, three back to two. General ops, operations costs from 40.8 back to 20. And uh, catering from nine and a half back to one and a half. Does anyone have any further questions or further suggestions? Um, just a question with that travel. Uh, I see we haven't used it, and I know we've already got other travel allowances and things. What's included in that travel line item? Like, is it actually even needed? Yeah, um, if we've got we've got um, a staff member who will be participating in a. Um, so again, COVID's knocked a lot of these things around because we actually haven't. And they can stay at a smaller amount because a lot of the, the wonders of technology with Teams is, as I think I've mentioned it before, this is where you really see the, the productivity efficiency from, from the investment in Teams. But um, uh, we've got the Ignite program coming up and um, so like they'll need a vehicle to travel and so we just keep it at a nominal. Um, not often do we um, do we have to send anyone anywhere, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to leave something in there just for for those circumstances. Mr. CEO, okay, are we happy to keep moving on after those changes. I've got spreadsheets everywhere up here. <laughs> Sorry, Bree, I'm imposing on your space there. Uh, okay, so, uh, right, internal plans charges, uh, same as last year, Mr. CEO. We haven't really used that. What, what's that one for? That's when that's when we book out. Mayor, I know it's it's only minor, but everything counts as um, 
if we wanted to drop that back to it's just literally when we book out a vehicle um, as I said and uh, that's the old joke sorry Susan but we've actually done the numbers on a couple of them lately and for of course we haven't needed uh, needed a council vehicle to the day I've paid uh, authorized use of personal vehicles for mileage so that could probably go back to 1500 easily and um, we are hence the then the travel budget somewhere else and so we we are looking at alternative delivery models rather than booking a vehicle out for a day. Okay. So back to 1500 on that one. Uh, please just interrupt me, councillors, if you want to question anything. Moving through to consultants and contractors, last year's budget was 31 and a half. This year um, we've got, I'm on the right column. Yep, sorry. Yep, 31 and a half. That comes back to zero. Um, and uh, is that right? I got that right? Yep. Okay, so just yep. Checking was that where Rainmaker was paid from? Yep. Okay. Um, Mead and Perry. Oh, sorry. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, varies um, depending on what they're doing, what services. Uh, but yes, it would be if I was going to engage them to do um, a report for me on widgets. Yeah, that would be where I'd take it from. If it's a HR one, well, then it'd come out of the HR bucket. So it just depends on what service they're delivering. But yeah, so at this point, I've no plans in this space for next year. Well, I've not, I've not catered for it. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Anything further on that? Councillor Potter? Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's wise not to have anything there um, because Rainmaker have been so productive for you, Mr. Mayor, and I'm just wondering whether it's wise to actually cut them out of the picture completely. Yeah, uh, look, I, I'm probably thinking uh, that we should leave that as a project-based thing next year, where there's possibly external funding available. So at this stage, I think we're probably more so committed to our economic development department. Um, with we've got those additional positions coming online. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Subject to the views of council, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Potter. Okay, happy to move on. Keep going, yeah. Um, okay, well, that's you done, Mr. CEO from XX Services point of view. Kerry, you've got those changes noted. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so we're on to economic development. Uh, Mr. CEO, we had uh, sundry sales, entry tickets last year, 5,000, because we've had nothing, but zero there, no revenue from that. So move on from that. Uh, employee benefits, salary and wages, we've got those figures seen there. Uh, quick summary, 246 uh, for wages and 122, 371,000 in total. Uh, increase of 32 represents uh, a 1.25 notional on uh, plus, plus adjustments for increments. Uh, and again, out on cost may change once funded positions have been determined. So, Mr. CEO, did you want to give us a run through? Because I know you provide us with an explanation sheet. Which yep. Right here as well. Thanks, Mayor. There's, um, well, again, we've, oh, a little bit of paper. Uh, we have um, several staff in that, uh, two particularly um, the administration officer, uh, economic development officer role, uh, and that's funded for next year or catered for for next year. And, uh, well, and then the two tourism officers that work with the VICs predominantly, and literally that is. Actually, interesting, I went back, I think it was um, 17, 18, 18, 19 year, it's almost to the dollar. The wages bill has, um, since the changes we brought about, has actually finally caught back up to where it was uh, in 17, 18, 18, 19. So we're running around that 370 mark then. So Mr. Sow, in summary, that's funding existing positions there are no new positions being created it's simply funding the positions that we currently have in economic development is that correct that's correct yeah um but uh, we would be um uh, we've got to wait and see what happens in this space but we'd be looking to then have that one full-time position uh in economic development after july to provide that support that has been uh, missing for the last 12 months at least or more would that be correct? That would yeah. be, Mayor. So, yeah, so we'll have an active participant. Now, um, there's, there's um, yeah, so filling the position, but, yeah, it would be as of once the budget's brought down, probably on the 11th, I'd say, yeah, and then we'll be right to roll. 
and we'll be looking at um, providing a, an emphasis or a little bit more of an emphasis on that development liaison role where we can provide that connection between uh, development happening out there and industry and building with our uh, across the organisation. I would see that as a key focus of the position. So there needs to be a rewrite of the PD and a, and a little bit of work in that space. But uh, we've got the period from now until July until the budget. And so, uh, um, but yeah, certainly absolutely a key focus. Thank you. Councillor Schumacher. Um, just in terms of that administration role, I was wondering why that's not recognised in exec, in the recognised here, because we haven't really had like a lot of administration support or I just probably want to understand it's probably more of an exec role I would have thought than an ED role. It's historic as to where it came across when uh, economic development got folded in in its current form um, when uh, we had the staff reductions of several years ago a couple of years back now with the, the coordinator and the senior tourism officer there has been a, a steady decline in the economic tourism staffing for a period of time. Um, certainly there will be a report go up next week on the future of the VIX, which is, um, oh, give you the, give you the, the it's, it's going to be a fair old discussion. Um, once upon a time and before me, there used to be a paid staff member in every VIC. So there's been a gradual um, natural attrition. No, no, there's been no redundancies or anything like that, and that's based to the best of my knowledge. Um, but certainly a natural attrition. And so, so when council uh, agreed not to renew the coordinator and the senior tourism officer role a couple of years ago, that position used to uh, give support to um, those two positions. It has morphed and as we go through, so we've left it where it is for this year's for the like for like and so it's certainly in the structure debate, uh, de debate discussion is if tourism ends up under a community services manager, that position would be rolled back up into the executive. That's the one I, I've talked about, about not transferring it across and then it would work with, um, well between the delineation but it would also certainly give capacity for increased support for councillors as well as that exec support. But it, that position does um, uh, a significant amount of work and I would um, uh, have been lost without it for the hospital work, the, the foundation, uh, Anzac Day. It, <laughs> that position now does a lot of um, the community, community support work. Uh, and yes, and you're exactly right, it belongs really in the exec, but just for leaving like for like, it's been funded out of that bucket for several years. And so we've just left it there for the sake of this discussion. Um, yeah, thank you for the explanation. Just in the spirit of um, zero-based budgeting and what that role actually does, I do think it should be acknowledged in the executive budget so that when we go into next year, it's pretty clear that those are executive resources. Absolutely, Councillor, but with all respect, if that was the case, then I'd move the two tourism officers over into communities and we've agreed previously or discussed previously we won't make those movements until after the budget's adopted and then we can do the structural and there's several of these that'll need to move because some of these wages, if tourism goes across into that communities department, um, yeah, so after the 11th in the first quarter review, yeah. but not at this point, I'm sorry to say, I would disagree with, with absolute respect. Yeah, I, I do see them as different in many ways, I'm sorry, uh, uh, because uh, that's actually already work that's happening. So I, that work's already happening for exec, it's not actually happening for ED. And I just want that clarity so that when we get an ED officer, there's not this discussion that there'll be a whole admin team supporting that officer, that senior position that that support would come from exec. So with respect, that's my thinking. It, it actually doesn't make sense to put an executive role in an ED budget. Okay, so um, general manager, is it something we could pick up once the organisational structure is done? Is there the capacity to be able to do budget revisions and move those items to the relevant departments at a, at a first or second quarter revision? So when we do our year end reporting, it better reflects where the budget yeah. should be. Mayor, if, if, if I may, it's, it's yeah. it, all these, once the org reviews, uh, once the, the positions are done and we get to the 11th is um, the effective date of all this. So first quarter review, you'll see all the shuffling of all this. So this will happen, but it will be in September. Yeah. Mm. So the budgets will be aligned 
to whatever we come up after that organisational review restructure. Yeah, okay. So just wanted to see you nod there, Kerry, that we can move the budgets to where they need to be to align with where those uh, positions fit under the new structure. Yeah. Just think from an accounting mechanics point of view that that can be moved. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mr. CEO. So, um, <coughs> Sorry, Councillor so, Duff. Um, just so I'm clear, so the Visitor Information Centre support is that that's going to stay the same in during, through this budget year. We're not cutting back on our support for visitor information centres through staffing. Not through staffing. There's a there's a whole discussion that needs to come. So when we've got to the where the area where actually in here we can we can adjust downwards a little bit um, as well. Where we have, um, as I flagged it, is the actual, we've pumped the, the, what we believe is the cost of the VIX into the actual, this, this version of it, um, which is a little bit more of a detail. The two, there's two staff, there's two staff in that role and there's, un, unless, well, there's no redundancies, there's no, there'll be two staff going forward and so we'll have two staff as support of the VIX, correct? Yeah, so the, yeah, there's no changes in staffing. Thank you. I just want to be clear on that because I'm, um, yeah, I'm very pro the VIX. Thank you. We'll have plenty of opportunity very shortly to, <laughs> to discuss it, and then next Wednesday, because it's a big old discussion. Yeah, Mr. CEO. But at this stage, no changes, Councillor, until we've had that discussion. Yeah. Anything further, Councillor Hanson, Councillor Pot? Happy with the ED uh, allocations at this stage? Yeah. Subject to that uh, org review that we have to go through. Okay, go on to materials for economic development. Um, we've got a total there of 260,000. And you can see the breakdown there. Uh, some big ticket items there were um, marketing 150,000, general operations 33,500, and subscriptions, memberships, uh, registrations of 50,000. Uh, Mr. CEO has provided us with his, uh, what I've been calling a zero base build. Uh, which is the detail that makes that up. Uh, does everyone have that sheet, that separate sheet? And Ms. Mayor, I did like that. drops. That was last Yeah, night. it was emailed yesterday afternoon, yeah. late, uh, yeah. councillors. Did we get a copy of that? Everyone got a copy of that? Yeah, one? it's in your... Yeah, it's, it should be in your pack. It looks like that, councillors, if you want to grab that one. Yeah. It's in the hard copy. Council. Should be the hard copy on your desk, Council. It's that one that looks like that. And Just it's got the one that went out last night. Can everyone see that? So, um, if you could just want to grab that and get it in front of your councillors, and then uh, Mr. Sia can talk through that breakdown. Um, So this is, um, and just struggling for time, and I do apologise, councillors and, and how as, but uh, I've also dropped um, the, the tourism offices, so I've also dropped this morning a list of all the different things, particularly its relevance for the VIX as far as the, um, the, the expenses that they put in for next year. Now, they have put in a, uh, the budget so, uh, on the little A4 sheet that was handed out this morning as well, um, a breakdown of all the different type um, activities. I've gone back through and, and some of the time it took looking at what the difference was between the recent advertising budgets and marketing budgets and going back in the day and having a look. And so um, the, the Dam Ambassadors uh, program that was running a few years ago, um, whilst we still have a Dam Ambassador in, in Matt Mott, the, um, the program, so neither of, those, um, neither of those previous ambassadors is funded. Um, so as in council contribution, and there used to be contributions into the Dam Ambassadors. We used to do, so the um, uh, Gumeri, uh, funding from Gumeri, uh, Pumpkin Festival, those sorts of things. So the South Bank Wine Festival, the South Bank Food Festival, they wine and they used to hit that fairly hard in this space. Nancy Jade's photography, um, the Pro Radio uh, APN print, which they used to do. The uh, window screenings on the um, building adjacent to the library that's currently the temporary customer service, all those window dressings, um, the, the screening, the wrap for the um, council plan for the um, uh, car. Um, we used to have um, 
which I would have said was uh, a lot less control over this. There was a lot of credit card transactions at the time, which used to be uh, a little bit hard to track down. This is going back quite several years, so they've been eliminated totally. Um, actually, they've been eliminated totally as far as in this space, as far as um, not being able to track. Maps for you, so the mud maps and the publications. Maps for you are the are the supplier of the map, and there's a they, they have we're having a relationship with them. Australian Events Marketing, JJ's Kitchen, uh, Roberta Shablon, Damien Martu, uh, Nancy Jade Photography, a lot of those um, type. Nichols Printing used to do the South Burnett Tourism Guide for us before we handed it over to South Burnett today, and uh, the relationship there, if, if councillors. Several years ago, we used to organise the printing and publication of it totally um, in conjunction with the then South Burnett Times uh, with the changes to the paper and certainly changes. We just take, we take um, about that $10,000 worth of advertising in it now uh, this last year, which was our commitment, and then uh, South Burnett today produce it. Um, we do regular advertising in uh, Morgan, Mo uh, Morgan Paper, um, yeah, Brisbane Marketing, Wyvernhoe, different events. So there used to be a lot of um, a lot of the food tourism uh, that they used to go to and participate in um, at the time. Uh, we've made allocations in this year's budget for Visit South Burnett. Um, there's the the VIX are actually there's a, a line entry in there this year for about six hundred and sixty dollars for both. Uh, we have councils a member of Visit South Burnett in its own right. Um, we pay a membership. The two dams we have is a separate membership to Visit South Burnett, so they can actually participate in the activities. We're going to sign the VIX up as a uh, a member of the Visit South Burnett. I've sent a request through to Visit South Burnett for the VIX because they're a tourism asset of council. Um, the VIX are a member of, um, have been for some time, Southern Queensland Country Tourism and with the changes that have happened, there will be about a $500 membership fee for them to continue in that space. For $500 it's actually quite, um, or probably $550, uh, it is actually quite um, a good investment because we end up tagging along with all the, the other, like any other tourism activity uh, with the SCQT stuff. Drive Inland is 6,000 plus GST, 6,600 is a membership. Um, we've engaged with uh, South Burnett Unpacked, Creative Roundtables, uh, yeah, images and video libraries. Um, probably uh, when Coordinator Tunley was still here was the last tourism for mill that we organised, so we've pulled back on that and that is indic indicative of some of the less expenditure uh, where we had different news agents. Uh, and councillors of the time would remember the Let's Go magazine. That was one of Craig's uh, initiative at the time. The videos, they're now getting a couple of years old now, but uh, we still use them. So that was done through Talkit, so the video marketing. So partly this space is, is a discussion, particularly after next week when we have the presentation from Visit South Burnett. We can pull back in a little bit this and then go project-based. Uh, I would think that there will be specific, so if we wish to renew the um, Let's Go videos, for example, then that would be a discussion and be a project base. So without uh, sounding too charitable, we did have a look at um, the marketing budget, which is, if I can jump straight to that one, we're sitting at 150 and we've only spent 50% of that. Now, uh, Baido ended up being doubled up in a couple of different spots and in this it shows up in the contract as a $10,000 so that comes out. Uh, it gets moved up into the uh, marketing subscriptions area. Um, we had a project last year that um, hasn't gone ahead that was catered for so it was uh, approximately a $50,000 project. So. Um, Given that that hasn't gone ahead and Council has uh, given no indication that, that anything like that specific project without going into what it was would be this funded this next year, that marketing budget can drop immediately to 100000 so there's 50 there because it is a, it's just a rollover from last year of something we're not going to spend this year and we have no, no plans to spend it next year. So, so Mayor, that's <laughs> saved me warbling on. Probably happy to take questions and um, um, answer them as best as I can. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor Potter. Yeah, so um, you mentioned regional flavours before. Um, so that was 
we actually got quite good cut through with regional flavours when we did attend. Um, it was a lot of hard work, a lot of staff members over a lead up to it and from. But I'm thinking maybe instead of something like regional flavours, I've always thought that we should be wrapping the Brisbane buses in our logo and our area. Um, to me, it's a one-off cost that would last 12 months or however long they're wrapped on the buses. But um, this is something I feel very strongly about and always have. Um, and I think that because that way we're looking at the drive market now and a lot of people aren't travelling. And if we can have our logo, picture of a dam, you know, one of our dams out there, picture of the silos, picture of the big pinna, you know, all these different wonderful places, the lavender farm that we've got, um, we don't have to all there, but, you know, uh, wrap a Brisbane bus, a couple of Brisbane buses with the South Burnett. And I, I do think we should seriously consider something along those lines when we're looking at advertising um, and expanding our visit. Mr CEO, if I could just jump on the back of that. There is, uh, I, and I agree with you, and, and while I'm not a specialist in this space, there would perhaps seem to be a gap in the branding of South Burnett in, in, that, in the uh, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane and uh, Brisbane, where the big population is, uh, in that northern... Uh, Brisbane and northern north coast. Um, COVID has caused people to turn left uh, and come up through uh, Kilcoy or to turn right and come up through Esk. Um, but uh, there's so many people that I've talked to that said, I didn't even realise you guys existed, never heard of the South Burnett. So there does seem to be, at least talking to people on the street, visitors, uh, a gap in our branding. Uh, it's interesting. How we deal with it, I'm not quite sure. Councillor Shoemaker, thank you. Uh, well, it was my understanding that uh, our VSB membership, being a tourism industry-led group, um, were managing marketing of our region. Um, and I brought the Southern Queensland Country Tourism Membership Board because they actually do target those areas and would work with VSB in that regard. Um, so my understanding is that VSB are leading up the marketing of our region I'm not sure that we've seen uh, any grants come through VSB. Do we get their report to indicate whether they're actually seeking funding in relation to being able to brand and market our region in addition to what we provide them, Mr Sear? Yeah, we, we have got their report. They have um, submitted, but I don't know of any that they were successful in. Uh, certainly we've um, supported them when we were at that meeting yeah. in Toowoomba. We went across and talked to TQ and advocated for their behalf for funding. And I think in this space, a little bit of this will be, um, as much as we don't uh, have agreed that we can do a run through and then there'll be a little bit of refinement, a little bit of this space will be after Monday and see what they're, what they're proposing. But I'm kind of on the same page, I think, with Mayor and Councillors, is that um, the confusion I have in my own, well, I actually don't have any confusion in my own head and I suppose oh, people, please feel free to disagree because, again, no offence will be taken. We are quickly retreating to our own own assets, and um, so so our marketing. So there's a proposal next year to, that we're talking to a local provider as far as um, marketing the dams, and that would cost us at about ten thousand. Now we haven't committed to it. We haven't. It's, it's just been a discussion. It's a. It is a. It is a local. Very much a local. A local person. Um, and if they can come back and it looks attractive, we'll bring that back and talk about, okay, this will be a marketing strategy and campaign for the dams. We've got the VIX, we've got the museums, we've the discussion about Benduma. I would be, the, whilst the bus idea is terrific, uh, and certainly in that uh, material that Stacey and them sent through, uh, do we, and like the great debate about town brochures, is it, if we're doing industry-led, is it our now role to do, we're certainly the MUN map because we own, we own the map uh, in partnership with a map company. Uh, is this our space or is this where VSB, if VSB is going to continue to move into this space, we hand her over and say, go for it, guys. We'll cheer loudly from the sideline and support because we are a, uh, uh, we are a tourism provider, no different to a motel or a resort or a winery. And we provide tourism assets and we manage and market our assets. But that's, that's the bit that will be yet to be clarified is so we're not tripping over each other and in the same space. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Feedback on those observations? Councillor, so, Councillor um, Potter? 
I'm going to cancel the pot of first cancelled off. Yeah, thanks, Danita. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, I s agree in some parts, but I do feel that um, there's nothing stopping us. We own the dams are ours. We can advertise our own. We're not giving VSB huge amounts of money to cover advertising, as I see it, not advertising to that scale. I mean, if we want them to advertise to that particular scale, they're going to need a lot more money because advertising is not cheap. We all know that. And I think that if we're really truly interested in spreading the word of the South Burnett, I think we need to get out there, whether we do it on our own or whether we go in partnership with VSB. But we own the dams. Why can't we advertise them ourselves anyway, If even if we're not in partnership at that time with VSB or, you know, discuss it with VSB? But I think I do feel strongly that we need to do something to get the South Burnett out there and amongst people within the within the drive market. I think Toowoomba's pretty good. I think a lot of people in Toowoomba know South Burnett. Um, but a lot of the people, as you said, Mr Mayor, you know, you go to the Sunshine Coast, they have no idea. They don't see past Mullaney, like, basically. So once they hit the mountains, it, no. So I think we need to get us out there. We need to advertise. And whether we do that on our own um, with our dams or with our towns or in partnership with VSB, it really doesn't worry me as long as we advertise the South Burnett. Should we then consider, uh, Mr CEO suggested that the marketing budget could come back from 150 to 100. Um, that's going to obviously find us 50,000, but should we leave a notional allocation in regional tourism marketing and how we choose to spend that, I suppose, will then be up for Council for future discussions. Thoughts on that, C Councillor Duff? So I think there's a clear um, d definition, well, should be a clear definition between marketing our assets as opposed to marketing the South Burnet because we have, like Councillor Potter said, we've got the dams, we've got um, Ringsfield House, we've got Bajuma Homestead, we've got our visitor information centres. All of that would be enough to do a, a wrap on a bus in any case. Whereas the Visit South Bennett, their role is marketing the region and that includes private um, as well as probably council. But that's probably a discussion we need to have with Visit South Bennett is, is where's, where do they see us, their marketing? Is it our assets only or is it the whole South Burnet? So I think that that's where the confusion is. And as Councillor Potter said, we haven't given them enough money to market all of our assets and then go out and promote the whole South Burnet. So, so my question to that would be then, uh, do we want to set that $50,000 that we found there aside for marketing of council assets for next financial year? Just something to ponder while we move around the room. Councillor Shoemaker, we'll come back to Councillor Henson shortly. I think you are next, Councillor Shoemaker. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm probably a little bit confused. So the breakdown on the sheet here says breakdown for the actual spend for marketing it says uh, 150,000 for this year, 140,000 to VSB and 10,000 to the South Burnett Touring Guide. So when we made that commitment to VSB, there was, um, I think it was $80,000 was going to the Tourism Development Officer and the remaining money was to be used for destination marketing. Um, so I think there's a conversation that, well, I know there's a conversation that has to happen. We've tried to have the conversation about how we partner in that. I agree with Council's approach in terms of we support and, and market our own assets. Um, and I thought, as we discussed the other day, that some of that marketing budget actually might sit within the communities department. So I'm probably a little bit confused there in terms of who's marketing those assets currently. Um, I think we need to have a targeted fund for our own assets. And then, um, yeah, VSB's commitment was always that they would go and seek funding beyond and membership buy-in beyond that 140000 to actually take on destination marketing. I was very supportive of having Southern Queensland Country Tourism support them in that state, interstate and international marketing space because they have the skills and expertise to do that. But I respect Council's decision not to support that. So um, in Council's hands, but I'm not really comfortable 
actually holding an open bucket of marketing funds without a clear strategy, I think that's something we can do in a quarterly review. And um, to be honest, I think the the marketing has to be has to be really thought out, and we need to have that discussion with VSB around what we're actually getting for those ratepayer dollars um, in terms of that hundred and forty thousand dollar contribution. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Henshin. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, I think on Monday, one o'clock, it's going to be very interesting when we have a presentation done by VSB, so we can sit here and go round and round. And I'd really like to, and look forward to sitting in and listening to that. And I think that's going to be a very important step forward in our in our budget workshops as to just what they've got to say to us and what their plan is and what they've done, because as you've said, Councillor Shoemaker. Yeah, in the last 12 months they've had some teething problems there, that's for sure, but it, uh, it'll be a very interesting meeting on Monday, 1 o'clock, that I look forward to and I think we can probably work further towards some facts and figures on, on what's in front of us today in the future budget meetings. Just summarising the comments there, um, would we then take the CEO's advice, bring the 150 back to 100, not allocate any notional bucket for marketing yet, until we've worked through that in the few, in coming months, we can always, as Councillor Shoemaker said, put in place a budget revision. That might go into communities, for example, for the dams or for other assets um, and sit where it really should sit. Is that where we want to go here? Um, I'm, I'm just, I'd just like to get clarity from councillors to what you want here. Thank you. My view is I'd like to see the VSB membership recognised with the other memberships in that subscription bucket. So that's a true recognition reflection of um, our membership and subscriptions there and the marketing bucket I actually propose until we have a strategy we don't actually allocate funds to that so that would be a quarterly review like every other process that we undertake I would think um, having an open-ended bucket there is not um, something that I'd probably support at this point in time Mr CEO okay so um Okay, we've actually budgeted seventy for VSB, which is the contra Yeah, the it's it. Yeah, when when we send it through to finance, that would be because it would be the one hundred and forty is the married up. Everyone's been on the same page all the way through the 70, 70, 70 from us, and they would source another seventy. So I'm not. I do not know what they'll ask for next week, but we've we've plugged seventy. So there's seventy in the one hundred and fifty that would go to VSB. We can easily move that down into subscription. So subscriptions have become 120. Yeah, and then that, yeah, that's a f probably a fair point. Because um, last year we had to find find where we, and I know I did say, come the first quarter review, we could fund it within the organisation. So we took it out of there. So we had somewhere we could put it, give it a home, and without having to increase the budget last year. Um, so if that's the case, that would leave us 30. We've got... Um, um, whether it's VSB or South Burnett today, but there will be some form of touring guide that we will participate in, so that's the 10, and then there would be just 20 left in the 100,000 if you look at that. So, yeah, I would still like to leave that 30 because we've got the 10 for uh, participation in a tourism guide, whatever that looks like, and then 24 um, other opportunities, be it um, the ones that we put the dam advertising in on the Darling Downs or... We'd use 20, so you just leave 30 in the marketing budget, which is our contribution for our advertising, 70 in the membership. We still take the 50 out and then hear what they've got to say. It really will be, I think we'll end up, um, um, and it'll come in one of the recommendations for next week out of the, um, out of the VIC report, is that we develop a visitor strategy uh, for our VICs. So, um, so we can decide where we're going with them going forward. Um, but I think it will be um, a partnership. It really will be a partnership, as, as, and I'm happy to say it again. I actually think VSB is going along really well now. They really are. But um, what they propose and what the tourism strategy and what the marketing strategy is, the bit I would be given, resources are so scarce, and yes, it, it is very expensive to advertise, and we're well aware of that. We've pulled right back in this space because we are hopping out of the way and leaving industry led. So if council's going to do something, we actually know what it is, um, bring a report back project based 
and we work with VSB and support their opportunities. But if they're going to be the, um, which is a good thing, the local tourism organisation, well, then they move into that space and they start promoting the region. Sorry, thanks for the CEO. Uh, Councillor Duffy. Yeah, so, so I'm um, keen for, as you said, for Visit Southburn to do that role, but there's always a gap with our specific um, um, assets and I'm pretty sure we have, and I know that probably um, General Manager O'May will be pushing that we get we have a budget for the dams and that's probably a, in a separate department, but just that that's what needs to be tidied up because there's always confusion about whether w that bucket of money that, well, that first of all Visit South Burnett gets or the, that we have in that 20000 now that you're talking about or does some go across to um, the um, department like General Manager O'Mayor's department? Like we, at some point we have to get that, that right for our dams and for those attractions that we actually have. Otherwise, as has happened in the past, they get left out or there's confusion around it. So I just wanted all that cleared up through this. Thanks, Councillor. So what I'm hearing here is I think there's an appetite in Council uh, to understand that there's two streams here. We've got, this is regional development, our contribution to regional development. Uh, that's what we're looking at here. When it comes to, and the appetite for Council is, is what I'm hearing is that we would focus our marketing endeavours in on our Council-owned assets into the future. Uh, that's the second stream of work that we would do. That's very specific to our assets. Um, we could look to, if that's the case here, General Manager O'May, um, provide Mr CEO n not have a marketing budget and regional development, but have budgets come through in your department that are part of a tailored strategy to marketing council-owned assets. Um, now, Mr CEO, I'd like to hear your feedback on that idea. Um, that would be a new budget item for you, um, GMO May, but we put it where it should sit. Uh, does that cause any problems, though? I don't want to trip over ourselves here. No, Mayor. What this would ideally fold into then is rather than trying to second guess ourselves for that tourism strategy or that marketing strategy, is we put it as an operational plan item to develop the uh, marketing strategy. Budgets adopted, council first quarter review, and then we, we're off and running. So we actually, yeah, uh, couldn't agree more, council, that we have no confusion as to, and I suppose that's what I was trying to articulate before, because it gets very confused space, not in a bad way, about who's doing what now. And so everyone's going to, you can see what the next stage is where, we, where we've, we've gone through the let's trip over each other stage. So the next stage, everyone will pull back and no one will do anything because no one quite knows where, where who's responsible for what. So part of the KPIs with the VSB is uh, a clear delineation of who's responsible and who's doing what. And then, yeah, if we put it in the operational plan, Mayor, is to develop a marketing strategy. Um, and and the, the preliminary, very, very preliminary conversations, the reason it hasn't come back, we haven't, haven't got a formalised proposal yet to bring back, but to develop a marketing strategy up for the dams, for the dams as a as an asset. Now it might involve your bus, it might involve posters, it might involve a whole range of things, but how about we develop up that strategy and then we can work out what's going to cost to fund it and if council's got the appetite to fund a $10,000, $20,000 campaign for the dams next year. And the great thing about a specific campaign is you can measure it. We had 5,000 hits, however, the radio we interview it, we've had 10,000 listeners, we've had 20,000 newspaper imprints, but yeah, so you can get that deliverable, measurable. So if we, I, I'm not that I want to give away money, but I'm happy to to drop that fifty out of it and just come back to a, and then put it in as an op plan item, and we'll develop up a specific marketing strategy. Yeah, and, thanks, and pick up that confusion. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Ciao. Yeah, I think I think that's a good response to what we're hearing around the table from council this morning. Um, so and I'll come to you in a minute, General Manager. So no, no. we'd be looking at making marketing zero. Okay. Um, and subscriptions, memberships and registrations would be increased from 50 to 120, which would be to move the VSB membership, the 70,000, into that line item. Um, yeah? Uh, yeah, so I, know, well, I, was, I was talking about bringing that back to zero, then leaving it, you know, abeyance until the operational plan was done and we develop a strategy. Yeah, just in terms of a zero-based model, if we can develop the plan, the strategy, and then we can cost it and then fund it. 
and once we agree to it. So General Manager O'May, that would come under your operational plan, I guess, um, to develop with council a, a marketing strategy for council-owned assets. Yeah, if we could. Um, yeah, Peter, so uh, unless you have concerns about that, uh, we're happy if we leave it at that. Yeah, no. GMMA, yep, you're comfortable uh, with that. Through you, Mr. Smith, you know, happy with that and, and yeah, just echo a lot of the comments. It, it has been the confusion of where it sits and we've had marketing budgets for the dams at, time, at some years and other years we haven't and so, yeah, just echo the comments. It, it, it would be good just to identify it and, and it's the purpose for what it is. Sorry, GM Jarvis, I moved on from you there. Yeah, my no, apologies. Thank you, yeah. Me, Mr. No, Over to you, thank you. Actually, you did uh, lead with that. I just was going to ask for clarification exactly what we're doing now, that's all. There's sort of just been a – I just wanted to verify what you've moved around so we do record it yeah, uh, correctly. That oh, was good. all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, so, so before we do wrap up recording this particular part, this materials area, the next item then was general operations for regional development. And in the breakdown, we can see there, Council, a CEO's provided a list of items, but there's no allocation against them. So I think we need to have a discussion now about what we, wanna, what we need to provide in resourcing to support our economic development officer, to support our regional development program um, in general operating costs. So, Mr. CEO, why don't we start with you? Thank you. Okay, so um, if that was the case, I initially thought I'd take it back to 30,000 neat. Um, particularly actually now 30,000. So if there's no regional development marketing at all in that top line, uh, your general operations will pick up any of your... We're going to have a staff member in that space next year. They're going to be doing industry liaison as well as other economic development. We've got the strategy. We've got a range of meetings to organise. So if that came back to 30 need, and that's our, that'll be our regional development economic budget basically. So you've picked up 30, <laughs> you picked up 30 in the one bit above it. So yeah, which is good. So we haven't really got a, you know, a, a build on this budget. We don't know what that 30 is going to comprise, but I think we're going into a new territory at the, with this. We haven't done anything for a few years. We probably don't know what's going to happen here. Um, is everyone comfortable to allocate a nominal amount, 30,000 or just, and then let the CEO and Councillor Shoemaker and the team work through um, that are throughout the course of the year, or do you want to actually be be more specific? I um yeah, I tend to agree with the CEO. We are going to need something there. Um, it's probably not ideal, but being that you know for the last two years we haven't actually had any in real investment in this area, probably having something to start with is a good thing. And then in the first quarter, once the person's on board or or whatever, we can we can start to understand the strategy moving forward, I guess. So, yeah, I'm in two mindsets. So we could keep it at zero and bring something forward, but that could make it tricky if we're trying to get started. So it might be best just to have it something to start with there and then as we go through the quarterly budget period, we can refine that further. Well, can I propose a compromise that we just allocate 20000 to that? It can be increased if we have a, a plan come forward, Mr CEO. I know we're pushing you pretty hard here. You've gone well so far. Are we happy to do that? Just a double amount of 20? The only, the only trouble, Mayor, with taking the other out is uh, the one that I would say is, is um, you've, we're taking the extra 30 out of the marketing budget. That's um, I think now we're running at about 83 out of this section. We'll have a person, but we won't have capacity to do any project. So even with the 20. So uh, I would like to keep that one at 30 just to, to keep it in there. The ones I've got um, already for next year for, for the business launch pad, which I'm not sure whether we'll go down or not, but that needs to be explored. Uh, there's an energy company that we've had some early discussions with uh, that we would need to have a look. We got the new two, well, potentially one, potentially two wind farms out here that we'll need to be working with and the small business friendly councils. And that'll need um, some projects as well. So there, I've, I've started pulling together a list, which is no by means definitive, but different projects the council has dabbled in uh, for a period of time that would be really good to get up and going and could be. Um, now, whether we need advertising, as I said, whether we need meetings, I suppose if, if we're going to compromise, we'll go to 25 and we'll call it a day if we're horse trading. Um, but, yeah, I, I would need to keep something in there for, for them to actually do, do something. 
Thanks, Mr. CEO. Councillor Schumacher. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think the 25 would be reasonable. Um, but I do see many of the activities that we'll be undertaking are very much liaison and um, resource int intensive, as in being there, building relationships and connecting dots. So, um, you know, the, the project side, I, I do see that still as something that we can bring through a standing committee So, and nominate budget through the quarterly budget reviews like we do if, if there is something that comes about that we desperately want to do. But there is some funding in that bushfire grant as well for some of these things. So I think um, having something to start with to give that person some capacity um, would be good. Uh, but I do see a lot of these tasks more about, you know, relationship building. And you know, in my experience in that space, you know, often that's being there. It's, it's you know, the occasional mem uh, attendance here or there. It's not really necessarily unless we get down to those specific projects and there are some like the investment prospectus and those sorts of things. But like the de economic development strategy, regional development strategy, you know, state development were there hand in hand with us and worked with us hard on those things. So I think um, starting with a blank canvas is kind of good and we'll build it up from there. That, that being the case, um, Kerry, you're probably going back and forward here. You need a, have you got a rubber there, have you? A pencil or rubber, Kerry? Um, in listening to Councillor Schumacher, there's going to be a fair bit of travel involved in this role because we don't want the person sitting in the office. They're going to be out there liaising and networking. And um, should we put 20,000 into general operations and put the other five into travel, so make travel six and a half and just leave 20 in gen ops? Because I don't know if 1,500 will be enough for that EDO. Would, you, would that be okay? Oh, that's 12,000. So, so, yeah, oh, okay. so we've got 12,000 in internal plans. So the right, travel so would be, if there's expenses, and other than that, we'll probably, because um, we do have, um, yeah, so that one probably, it sounds contrary, but we've put um, plant hire in there, internal plant yeah. hire, so because they'll need a vehicle to get about. We figured they would have to get about and talk to people, particularly if they're talking with developers and things. Sorry, Mr. C. Yeah, no, we'll leave, if we leave it at 25 and 1500, and then the motor vehicle travel cost to be picked up in the 12 through internal plant. Sorry, I didn't I didn't see that one. Yeah, thanks for that. And, okay. and for clarity, they won't get a vehicle, but they'll just have to book one out of the pool. Right, okay. Yep, yep. Have, have we still got that coloured vehicle? No, that wrapped one? Yeah, okay. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Potter. I just want to go through this um, again. Um, I know I'm going back over the things here. So with um, marketing, we're taking marketing down to seven zero zero. Okay. So and where is that money going from marketing then? So seventy thousand of that goes to memberships, which yep. is for VSB. For VSB, yeah. Yep. Fifty. Um, so that fifty becomes one hundred and twenty. Yep. Yep. Um, we then put. Uh, 25,000 of that, sorry, we, we then make um, general operations 25,000. General ops is 25. Okay. okay. Yep. And the, the others uh, um, stay the same. So we then have zero for marketing, 25 for general operations for ED, and 120,000, which would be the 50,000 worth of existing subscriptions, including Tisby, plus another 70 for VSB. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Potter. Yeah, we've been around around circles, um, but it's a good process. It's it's this is good good stuff. So, Kerry, just to clarify, then um, materials budget, we would have uh, materials two and a half thousand, nothing for cleaning contracts, advertising twenty thousand, marketing zero, general operations twenty five thousand, subs memberships and registrations one hundred and twenty thousand. Catering two and a half and travel fifteen hundred, and then go down to internal plant twelve thousand. You got that, Kerry? Thank you. Now, yeah. So I think. Sorry. Let's uh, let's look to wrap up economic development. Any final comments? We'll go to those, and then I suggest we've probably earned a cup of tea, and then we can come back and look at the VIX and councillor costs, uh, as well as then P and C. So, uh, final comments on economic development, Councillor Shoemaker. Thanks. Um, just with that catering budget, I think I think we should pull that right back to like a thousand dollars because really I can't. To be honest, besides like the regional development committee meeting, I've paid for the catering. Um, you know, there'll be a few of those. I can't really see 
catering being a priority for regional development, like it will be more on the ground and, you know, if it's an occasional sandwich or meal or something, there should be something there. But, yeah, I'm kind of – probably seems like a lot of money for catering. Thanks, Kerry. You got that, $1,000? So catering comes back to $1,000. Thank you. Everyone happy with that? Wrap this one up? Okay, now move that we break, uh, we adjourn the meeting um, and uh, resume at 11.10am. Uh, Councillor Henshin is our uh, <laughs> reliable seconder for these breaks every time. <laughs> it's one of our standing jokes, Councillor Henshin always seconds the morning tea break. Uh, those in favour, carry unanimously, thank you all. Okay, uh, I'll move that we resume the meeting. Do we have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Duff. Uh, uh, those in favour? <laughs> Carried unanimously. Thank you all. Okay. Um, rightio. So we're up to the uh, visitor information centres. And I think the first one is the Kingaroy Vic. Um, and the first section, Mr. CEO, is the income from sales, uh, which I see you've got a, just an expected slight reduction there um, from 55,200 in total back to 50,500. Uh, should we be comfortable with that? Take a conservative approach on that, okay? Um, and again, councillors, feel free just to inter just to interrupt if you want to um, speak on anything. Um, through to materials, then um, we've got uh, forty-five thousand proposed uh, for materials, six thousand for volunteer expenses, three thousand for general operations. A total of fifty-four thousand there, plus uh, internal plant charges of four thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven which would then um, make the total cost uh, 58967 for the Kingroy Vic. So, um, Mr CEO, did you want to explain anything or will councillors feel free to ask questions? Yeah. Forgot, sorry. Um, thanks, Mayor. So what we've done is um, um, the two tourism officers that work with them have done up this little um, sheet for me about the well, the A4 sheets about just the volunteer expenses and the Christmas party and for the volunteers. We've been running, uh, we've been budgeting and we've been offsetting the VIC budgets in through the uh, ED, uh, understanding the ED and exact budget for the last couple of years, just, just as uh, we've certainly got our head around it. These are the numbers in here are reflective of the actual cost of, of running these centres. So there is a little bit of movement around with taking uh, the electricity uh, across to properties. So there will be continued consolidation. So there would be actually a slightly increased cost again. Um, finance very kindly. I think we had a loan set against these about two years ago. So they've very kindly taken the loan expense into the finance costs. Uh, so this is really just by buying the materials. It, it literally is buying the materials and the, the general operations of the centres and they're all the same. What they expect in revenue uh, going forward in a normal year. In a normal year. And um, what it costs them to operate, literally what it costs to operate a VIC. And I'd note, and again it's in the report next week and so there's probably a further discussion about the VIX. Um, we've got the VSB presentation on Monday, but as far as our own asset, there is a specific report going up about the VIX uh, next Wednesday. Last year, we last financial year, with actual spends, we ran a uh, net operating loss across the five of them of 40,000. Um, I expect this year will be similar, if not any different. They do, with the volunteers, they do a wonderful job. We have, um, issues with the volunteer model um, as far as um, keeping them all open, certainly the accreditation. There would be the recommendation on Wednesday that we formally write and ask for the accreditation to be extended to 30 June rather than the end of the month, end of March. So while we, while we have the discussion, I suspect in my own mind that the VIX will be a discussion as to, again, I'm, I'm not actually advocating closing them or doing anything radical like that, but there will need to be the old adage about it's been not working for the last couple of years in, in keeping them open and we're seeing now more and more that we have random shuts when we don't have people about. There are advantages and disadvantages to being not accredited. Um, the staff, the two tourism officers, have recommended that we keep the accreditation 
if, if we can, at, well, I won't say at all costs, but they would like to keep the accreditation and they'll detail, but yeah, it'll be a much more detailed uh, report as to um, what we do and how we manage these going forward. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillors, uh, just on that budget for the Kingaroy Vic at this stage, comfortable with the CEO's recommendation? There, yeah, yeah Councillor Duff. <coughs> so that's pretty much um, just in keeping in what, so we're not cutting back anywhere, we're just looking after them pretty much the same as we did last year, so I'm good with that. I'm just keen to see us support the VICs. It's very much business as usual, Councillor, but we've, where we've been offsetting in the other the budgets, we've, we've actually moved it into this this year, so it just you can see it in the right spot. Mm. That's just what the variances are down the side. Yep, is the moving of budgets around. Yep. Okay, so we'll move through to the Mergen Vic. Uh, we've got uh, income there, 8,500, consistent with last year. No change in expectation there. Uh, over the page, we've then got uh, materials, 5,000. Volunteer expenses three six two five and general operations one thousand, so total expenses of nine six two five. Uh, any questions there, councillors? Same principle, just maintaining and holding what we've got there, Mr. CEO, pretty well. Uh, just one question, just with those internal plant charges. Um, sorry, I've noticed now it's under the King Roy Vic. It was. 4,967 that we'd budgeted for, but we haven't actually used any of those funds. I'm just wondering if that line item's really required. My apologies, Councillor. Just, just we're in King Arroy again. Yeah, sorry. I was just just, oh, okay. Yep. Oh, that would probably be because, again, no, uh, predominantly I've gone uh, mileage. Um, yeah, if you wanted to drop that down a little bit because we've been... We had uh, one of the officers took an extended period of long service, so um, oh, the yeah. discussion we had before with um, with the, the admin uh, in economic development, that position relieved for uh, three, four months, three months. Mm -hmm. um, so we tended to use, but yeah, whether you, actually I suppose that yeah, whether you wanted to drop that down to two and just keep a nominal yeah, allocation just, in there, Mayor. I yeah. think that'd be a good yeah. idea. Yeah. 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 So so if we take that back to two. Okay. Is there anything, any questions or thoughts on Mergenvik, Council Schumacher? Um, my only question was just in terms of staff room requirements for our VICs. Um, I can see we've sort of, you know, and I'm by no means challenging these costs. I just wonder if we should include them. Like we've we've got $130 in a couple of weeks and um, I'm imagining that's for tea and coffee and those sorts of things. So I'm just wondering if we should nominate an amount across the different areas for staff room requirements or whether they're encompassed in another area. They've been folded into general ops. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so those those ones are, are we're stuck there for a little bit because they're still showing from previous years or from previous expenditure. But yeah, fundamentally we fold all that into general ops. No, that's fine. I wanted to make sure we had tea and coffee for our volunteers. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. CEO. Uh, we'll move through to the Nango, the Energy Centre. Um, so maintaining revenue at the same. Budget last year, we've got 7,000 year to date. Uh, coming through to materials, as presented there, 10,000 materials, volunteer expenses, three and a half, general operations, 1,000. And over the page, we've got nothing. So that's, uh, that's the total there for the NANGO. Uh, total cost, 14,500. Revenue, 10,100. Any questions, any observations, Mr. CEO? Business as usual. Okay, so we're comfortable with that. Take a bit of time.
Okay, we'll move through to the Wandai Vic, 1060, uh, revenue 23,500. Uh, a slight decrease on last year, we budgeted 25, down to 23 and a half, conservative estimate there. Uh, down to materials, we've got 20,000 for materials, which is um, an in there, which is an increase on last year. Uh, but I think you'll probably find that we've just rolled all that up, have we, Mr. C? I think we've folded all the others in. Yeah. Mayor, what, what we're finding actually, Wando is probably, um, if I can pick a favourite, the star out of um, the materials come through for the purchasing of the um, and sales. So that you see, we've spent 17,000 a year to date at Wando uh, on, on materials, and then their sales are up as well. Um, they pretty much nearly need themselves out as far as income expenditure. So, um, yeah, so again, the budget is to be, we're trying to make it reflective of what they actually do rather than, than um, a nominal allocation. Yeah, so we'll have income of 23 and a half, expenses of 24, budgeted for this next year. So as I said, they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're pretty close they're pretty close to neutral, so if we are all like that, it'll be happy days. Okay. Yeah. We'll just keep moving on. Black Butt Vic, uh, keeping the income pretty well the same as last year. Expenses, volunteers, 3,000, operations, 1,000, total costs, 4,000, so 1,553 in income, $4,000 in expenses. Uh, anything there, Mr. CEO? Yeah. You? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So this one's a little bit exploratory because this is really the first full year now of the partnership with Roy Emerson Museum. So Black Butt isn't accredited, so it was the one that we let the accreditation lapse a couple of years ago, and it's been shut, effectively shut now for some period of time. Roy Emerson, so. They're managing the volunteers, so we're starting to fold them in. So we've supplied um, a phone, internet connection, a notice board. Um, there will be some signage. So this one I'm a little bit less confident of, of what the partnership will look like as, a, as it continues to roll forward. And it's, a, it's an ongoing, but this is the first of the co-location uh, type. And it actually, we had not literally no volunteers for um, Black Button, so rather than leaving it shut and given the growth in black but this will be a really interesting one to watch as to how a partnership model develops and at the moment all the parties and very goodwill and i would acknowledge roy as a museum they have been terrific to deal with so a good model uh, pilot project mr ceo yeah okay hmm. uh all right well we move on to, to the museum uh we've got two thousand dollars worth of budgeted income I think so far this year we've we've had that level of income 2008 this year to date uh, in expenses uh, we've got two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars there which is a bit of a decrease on what we had um, in the budget last year mr. CEO for the museum uh, well, yeah oh yeah so we've got uh, yeah, sorry, donations. I meant to say two thousand dollars in donations. Yeah, um, two thousand dollars in donations and, and um, two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars in expenses. So, more we'll of a conservative approach there, Mr. CEO, with the costs at the museum this year, this next year. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, thanks, ma'am. With the museums, I've just pretty much gone with with the um, what the two staff have recommended. It's it, it is yeah. There's there's not much really to see here. It's it. They almost could disappear into a, be folded into another line, but anyway, they are. It's how it's accounted for at the minute. Thank you, Mr. CEO. If we just go over the page then to the Wandai Museum. We expect to get a thousand dollars in from donations, expenses of three thousand. The property maintenance there, Mr. CEO, that was six thousand dollars. That's moved across as you've highlighted there to the properties department now, hasn't it? So that'll be in their budget. That's why the difference there. Comfortable with that. We do my homestead. Uh, we'll flick over the page, no income there. So it's expenses there of um, uh, 8,500, 2,000 for materials, 6,500 for maintenance, and we've got that increased allocation for the caretaker 
uh, up from what was, I think, six and a half to 12 and a half, approximately, Mr. CEO. Yeah. yeah. Anything to add to that, Mr. CEO? No, the, the higher budget amount last year was, was offset, actually, as, as we spoke when we spoke about Bendouma. The, um, we had thought we would have had to have covered the uh, initial heritage study in full, but um, Communities Department was successful in securing some external funding for that, so that uh, amount hasn't been replicated into the year budget. It'll be a ongoing discussion, and again, I suspect a project-based approach with Bendouma as to what's required in that space. Thank you. Radio, the Kingaroy Art Gallery, expected income $500 from sales, uh, donations 10500 and general operations cost of 1920 Anything to highlight there, Mr CEO? No, I'm just not sure why we popped up the general operations from 1500 Would that have come through from the guys on the hill? Mm. Yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, so originally we used to have the budget for the, I guess, the contribution to the art galleries down in that general operations. So we've just split it out to where it's the, so moved the budget. <clears throat> Sorry, from that general operations to that contributions where the invoice is currently hitting. Oh, so that's some of those costs yeah. that are <laughs> moved down there. Thanks, Kerry. Wandai Art Gallery, uh, no income, 9,000, oh, sorry, donations of 9,100. My apologies to, uh, to Elaine. Um, and uh, materials there, general operations of 2,900 budgeted. So those figures are uh, same as last year, uh, as is the internal plant charges. Uh, Councillor Schumacher? Was this the one we were talking about, or was it the contribution that we were evening out? I just can't remember. Can you just confirm? Yeah, we went back. We had a conversation. So uh, Wando's registered for GST, so it's 10,000, so hence the difference now. The, the internal workings of the galleries, I can't explain to you as to why. So they both get their 10,000, um, but one shows us that these are ex-GST numbers. King Roy is not. And then we pick up extra in um, the operational budgets for the, um, for the um, gallery and Wondi, and that's they offset each other. So pretty close as much as we can make it, they both get fairly much the same thing. But it's sort of blended differently. Thanks, Mr. CEO. Well, that concludes. Oh, sorry, um, Councillor Potter. Yeah. My apologies. No, that's all right. Look, just curious about internal plant charges because I don't think any of the other. The, I mean, King Roy doesn't have it. So, what is the internal plant charges for the Wondai Art Gallery? I suspect, actually, in the it's probably similar to uh, the King Roy Vic, but it would be. Um, I don't know, Pete. I'm actually looking at that. I'm wondering whether it's mowers. Yeah, through you, yeah. Mr. Yeah, I suspect it'll be where, where parks and gardens have, have done work up there or from, yeah, mowing or any plant plant high up there. So, Kerry, I think if we just neaten that back to 1500 and then we're, there's a nominal finger and then we'll just work from there. We'll get to the point, Kerry, where you can cost all these things across to these budget allocations in time. Be a lot of journals to do. Uh, Okay, so we're on to councillor expenses. Now, the proposed budget for councillor expenses uh, last year was $707,000.54. This year it's proposed to reduce councillor expenses down to $699.554, which is a $37,000 saving. Uh, and that's on the basis that um, at this stage, um, we, we, we're yet to hear from the uh, remuneration, remuneration tribunal um, but we're assuming that there'd be no, at, on this budget at least, no increase to councillors' wages, um, and we have reduced the vehicle and fuel expenses nominal allocation from 25,000 down to 20,000. I will note uh, that councillors have this year so far uh, only spent $30 on meals and incidentals, uh, zero on hospitality expenses, zero on motor vehicle and fuel, and have only spent $7,000 out of the $25,000 budget for professional development. Uh, so uh, any questions on that, Councillor Duff? So I'm just thinking on the meals. Why, why are we putting it up if we've 
we're so low on 30, why do we need to have 3,909? We don't have to necessarily, I suppose. Mr C. I think we've just put that in there as a starting point, Kerry. Um, yeah, we just held the budget, so there's been no increase to it, so it's just held on previous history. So if councillors want to adjust it, please. If you want to adjust the accommodation and meals. Um, Mr CEO, however, if councillors were doing professional development, the meals and accommodation associated with going to a larger centre where that's provided, would Kerry, would that that have to be coded separately back to meals and accommodation, wouldn't it? So you'd have your conference fee, and then if we had to book a motel and pay for meals for a council to be, say, in Brisbane for three days, that would be a separate budget, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. It wouldn't be all wrapped up into the PD budget. No, okay. Um, so, councillors, what are your thoughts on, on that? Leave wages as they are until we wait to hear from the tribunal and then it'll be a matter for council in July as to whether uh, what approach you want to take there, um, depending on what they come up with, Mr CEO. Mayor, I, honestly, normally they release by December. The fact that there's been no uh, ruling, it would be extraordinary if they make a ruling now. So they'll be they'll be as were. So we we would budget, or we will be budgeting as as it was in the 2000, 2020 year. Thanks, Mr. CEO. So for second year in a row, the councillors won't be getting a pay rise. Uh, they're getting the same in twenty two and twenty three as they were in two thousand and twenty. Um, so there's no increase there for councillors. Uh, accommodation, Mr. CEO, what are your thoughts on accommodation meals? Yeah, um, again, as, as councillors, as things come back to, to life, we have the LGAQ Civic Leaders Forum, um, ELGA, and will be June this year, and then Bush Conference, which was cancelled last year, which would have impacted that number. Probably um, the accommodation, whether you wanted to neaten it up to like a 7.5 or something like that, the accommodation is, I would be a bit wary about touching that because of the value of it. Meals you know, in your hands, Mayor. Yeah, I'm happy just to neat it up to 7.5. Um, do we want to just uh, neaten up the meals to 3.5? I'm just putting this for a suggestion. Um, we don't tend to use it anyway, councillors, do we? Um, but anyway, we can put an allocation there. Hospitality expenses, I think that's that provision for the mayor to have hospitality expenses marked, but I think we looked to take that out of our policy, didn't we? Uh, to say that we wouldn't do that um, into the future. Yeah, no, you have, Mayor. It's, it's, it's been certainly um, been decreasing yearly as, as we've gone and this year as we've halved the previous budget. So, again, whether you wanted to leave a... If there was a civic reception or something where you where you needed a nominal amount, I mean, yeah, again, in your or thousand maybe. A thousand, then. okay. Yeah. Just, we'll just we we just took it fifty percent. So on on the last year's allocation, so as a as a as a starting point, so yep. in your hands. Vehicle and fuel at twenty thousand. Um, again, reiterate that none of the seven councillors, none of us are claiming vehicle and fuel. We're doing all of our own travel out of our own pocket and have been for the full financial year. Um, and when we discussed this in the workshop, that was really about having a nominal allocation there so that if councillors have to travel long distance outside of the region on council business, um, that there's something there that they could claim. Um, so are we happy to leave that 20,000 there just as a nominal figure at this stage, Mr CEO? Leave that, okay. Uh, and professional development, just holding it the same as last year, 25,600. 20. Uh, that's been challenging with COVID, hasn't it, to get much PD, not to mention the fact that we're busy, very busy. It's hard to, time for PD for all of us. So happy to leave it as is, same as last year, everybody. Yeah, okay. Um, internal plan charges, $5,000. So that's where councillors have to use one of the council vehicles to travel away to a meeting in Maribor or Brisbane or somewhere. Can that, can that think, go and we we'll use think, our own vehicles? Or? Yeah, well, what do you we think? seem to. We haven't used it. And, um, you know, many of us are using our own vehicles or carpooling, so I'm not sure that's really needed. Oh, I don't know. I've been to Bundaberg numerous times, Brisbane. Um, I've been, yeah, a number of places. Would councillors rather use their own car? It would rather, councillors rather use their own car and use the vehicle and fuel expenses? And so if you have to go to Bundy or Brisbane and you choose you to claim it... You can charge it if you like. You can just 
charge it to there. It's, I don't know. It doesn't worry me, but we haven't been using it. I know. I know. Um, we had talked in early in our term about using the um, the coloured car and taking it around to help promote the region. But our EDO might need that too into the future, Mr. CEO. So um, I don't know. What do you want to do there, councillors? Well, it's five grand. On a personal level, Mr. Mayor, as I said the other day in the meeting, my car would probably not make it to um, distance on. A couple of days' drive, I could make it to Bundy or Maribara or Brisbane, but I would not take it on a long drive because I just don't think my old girl would be able to do that distance. So in that case, I would possibly need um, a vehicle to, to okay. go that distance to Buck Alden or something like that. Well, can I suggest that we bring the 20000 for vehicle and fuel back to 15000 and we leave the 5000 there? We can always, you know, they'll balance themselves out, won't they? That way you've got that option if you want to take one of the local cars. Are we happy with that? Kerry, got that? Yeah, okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, I think we could just... Sorry, sorry through you, Mr Mayor, just to drop that mules and incidentals back just a bit more, maybe to 3,000. So, I mean, considering okay. that we only... I know I know we're going to go to some conferences, but I just think that that's yeah. probably more than we actually need, 3,500. Thank you, Councillor. I'm going to be a little bit uh, controversial here now with the, at the will of my colleagues. Um, the media are very good at reporting on uh, when councillors grant themselves an increase in wages and travel costs and meals. I remember in our first term, we got whacked about increasing our um, Canberra meal expense or something up. Well, if you're listening out there, the media, it would be nice if you'd report on the fact that this count, these councillors haven't taken a pay rise for two years. No councillor has a vehicle allocated. The mayor doesn't have, even have a vehicle allocated. Uh, we've cut our budget in every area for two years now, and I would suggest to you that you'd be hard pressed to find a council in Queensland um, where councillors do so much out of their own pockets. And I'm sure General Manager Jarvis, with her experience being around the state, would concur with that statement. So it would be nice to see some acknowledgement of that in the media, perhaps at some stage in the future. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. So can we cut that one back to 3,000? Th thanks for allowing me that indulgence, uh, colleagues. Okay. Um, all right. So we're on to... That's everything done. Everyone comfortable then with that one? Um, we'll move on to people and culture, I think, which is the last section. Mr CEO, thank you. Yep, Mayor. So rather... And certainly this one with the on-cost recoveries is always a little bit difficult until we actually get to the uh, end-of-year adjustments. Um, there's budget allocations put in there, but I, I will be very clear and open that this will move around a little bit depending on end, end of year adjustments. So happy to again run through it, Mayor, as, as best as, but with the recoveries, the on costs that we spoke about before, and it will be across all. So the on costs from the like, executive service and things end up being com coming into the on cost recoveries and they fund the superannuation annual leave and the list as it's, as it's there. Um, so yeah, happy happy to go through it as, but there will be there will be adjustments in this space. So if we just look at um, first of all uh, income to CO, so yeah, on cost recovery, as you said no change. We'll just adopt what we had last year and then see where that lands. Trainee apprenticeships uh, grants incentives, we're expecting that to be down from from uh, well, it's three fifty two so far this year, back to one hundred and fifty. So. Um, I think we need to know yeah, about no, that. we're only we we're, we're budgeting the the and without stealing Beck's under, but the team has done terrifically good around chasing up um, every little incentive that they can possibly, and it's allowed us to um, continue to to expand. We've absorbed this year, for example, which is the school based trainees into the into the budgets for the wages and everything, and can report next week updating on that. Um, so we're going. We've taken a uh, conservative approach of, of we are certain we would get the 150 with the very much the trainee uh, incentives that the state offer. If there is anything else, that's a bonus. And so we just we just work to what we know as a base and then work from there. Thanks, Mr CEO. Yeah. Is everyone comfortable we move through to expenses, employee benefits? Um, and we got there, and, and uh, managers provide us, Mr. CEO provide us with a. Everyone got that sheet? That's just the staffing sheet that shows the number of positions. So we have a total cost there of $900,722, which includes 8.77 uh, full time equivalent positions. Uh, and that 
figure is up on last year because, of course, we've just factored in the 1.25 notional percentage at this stage. Um, so we might just let councillors have a look through that employee benefits section um, and just let us know if you've got any questions over the page as well. Anything you want to add to that, manager, at this point in time? No. Pretty self-explanatory. An eight dollar increase. Sorry. Uh, so pretty well holding budget as per last year. Manager, anything, Mr. CEO, to, to comment there? Any issues or concerns there with that? Yeah, just um, just yeah, eight eight dollars. I'm not sure how that one's not getting back, but we've very much been trying to hold, um, manage the inflationary pressure, and just hold. Thank you, Councillor Schumacher. I just had one question more um, can be taken on notice. I just want to just try to understand in terms of all of our expenses across the council operation, um, what percentage of expenses is actually just purely on people and resources? People. Can we take that away and yeah, come back? Just, just so I got it clear. So just... If, if 100% of the budget is everything, yep. so people... How much do we actually... What does it actually yeah. just purely cost to employ everybody? Yeah. We'd, be, we'd be about... Well, I yeah, think we'd be... Percentage? Yeah, about 30, 34. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. at a guess, just right. But yeah, no. Yeah, about a third now. Yeah. And, and the I balance, just... that balance will be too, as we continue to pull back on external consultants and contractors... The percentage balance will change because, uh, and this is, you do, actually it's a good question because people think, oh, they look at your budget and think, oh, you've got 40% of your costs of staff and it's terrible. But if, you, if you're not blending and you're doing more and more with your own people, that percentage moves. So the percentage is not necessarily reflective of the overall budget may not have moved, but you're doing more internally than you are doing externally, for example. So... It looks bad, but it's not bad. Does that make sense? Oh, no, and it could be a good thing. I mean, if we were spending less on consultants and that 34% went to 38% and the consultants' percentage came down, that's probably a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but people will look at that percentage, and I've had it before. They look at that percentage in isolation, and, yeah, it's a good question, but I think it's about 34 but we'll, yeah, we'll be able to bring that back. Yeah, by no means do I want to be critical. I'm just trying to understand in terms of our whole operations, that bigger picture. But yeah, I'd appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Uh, any questions or observations on materials? Councillors, Councillor Duff? Um, yeah, just to, just the, um, you've got investigations, last time it was 10,000 and now you've got zero for that one. Legal, zero. Just where is that sitting now? That um, when we balanced up, we've taken the four. Well, it's got two there, but it'll be four. So the consultants' contractors at thirty thousand, rather than thirty-four as it was last year, will pick up any of the um, investigations and the EBA, LGAQ type costs. So they'll sit there. Thank you. Thank you. Just wondered also about the travels. Um, last time it was one hundred and eighty. Now it's to five thousand. Is that just, is that, so that it's just a separate bucket. Just wanted a bit of an expl explanation around that one. Sort of balance out with general operations, hey, we, oh, yeah, oh no, maybe not. We're, we're over in, um, you'll notice we're over in internal plan charges and, and heavily. Again, we've, we've given 
Oh, Bar Workplace Health and Safety, and Beck, I'll, I'll stand corrected. So if I get any of this wrong, please say. So we're probably looking at that as um, as part of a, a, a combined bucket at the minute to balance itself out. But we, we're booking out vehicles, Bar uh, Workplace Health and Safety. So, um, you know, maybe it's just an allocation thing, but uh, travel would be for when, when staff have to travel. There's self-explanatory as that sounds, looking for the right words, but whether you want to crank at it. Thank you, Ms. CEO. Um, would be for those using their own vehicles, uh, and then my team will also hire the vehicles um, when they're not allocated one for those internal plant charges. Thanks, Beck. So just what um, was, so it's just, in, it was zero before, so now, so you didn't use any, and now, is it big? Just wondering why it's gone from zero to five thousand. Just oh, oh no, the budget. Oh, sorry, was, it was one hundred and eighty up to five. The 5, budget 000. was five thousand um, last year, so we've just held that five thousand again this year. But the year to date expenditure is only one hundred and eighty, but the internal plant charges are over. So um, one probably compensates the other. Mr. CEO, is that, would that yeah. be the explanation? That's very well put, Mayor. That's where I was trying to go before. So there's 63. We're actually over on both of them in that space, but um, we are yeah, 63 between the two. Yeah, no, no that's fine. Um, I, just in relation to the stationery, um, have we talked about postage and stationery and everything coming out of one corporate budget, or is that split across all budgets? Just so that I'm aware, I'm not being critical, I know stationery is required, but is that required for each team or is it already in a corporate budget? I thought we had discussed that last year, uh, Kerry, we were going to consolidate all the stationery and postage and cop photocopying and everything into one central budget under um, yes, corporate under or corporate, I think it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, are we still doing that? Yeah. It's yes, a good question. I'm, I'm pretty sure from all discussions we've had is that we've been trying to put all those budgets all together in that corporate sense and then corporate all the expenditure then for that gets allocated there. So would we, sorry, you, you go Councillor Shoemaker, I think. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. There's just a line item there for stationery that probably needs to be consolidated as well. Can we move that across into corporate? Yeah. Just, yeah, just wanted to note that so that mindful of it when we're going through all budgets. So I'm sure you, Mr. Mayor, just want to know about the subscriptions, memberships, and registration. So are they so individual departments will have separate allocations. We've got that. We had the one in exec services, so they're just additional memberships required for each different department. We haven't spent anything this year. Do we have any of those through people and culture? Thank you. Yes, we do. Um, I'm not sure why it's showing zero, to be honest. Yeah, but we do have subscriptions there, you guys. Yeah. I imagine you'd be subscribing to professional resources um, as well, Mr. CEO. Yeah. yeah. Can we just confirm what they are and where they have been coming from? Just so that we're not doubling up budgets. Yeah, we'll just circulate a list as to, to what ones come out of there and mm -hmm. yeah, and just double check where they've gone. Yeah, thanks, Mr. CEO. Yep. Sure. Workers comp, we've got two hundred thousand. Cost us 190 this year. Um any changes expected there, Mr. CEO? Still gonna be around that level? I, I would think so. It actually was pushed down a thousand dollars this last year. So there has been um with the workplace health and safety, there's been downward pressure on it. I don't know that it'll move too much this year, but yeah, certainly um, from where we've been in the past, it's actually, it has come down a little bit over the last couple of years, which is good. And the flip side of that, it means that less people have got less injuries as far as that require it, which is a terrific thing. Well, I'd be very, I'd be very, very careful of workers' comp if, if um, yeah. As I said, I, I just it, if you can, but it, when the bill comes in, it is what it the is. The bill is yeah. what it is. I understand that. Yeah. So we'll leave it at two hundred. Um, yeah. General operations. We've spent five nine and a half. What what's that used for? Yeah. 
Yeah, so so we got a budget of nine and a half for general operations. We spent five. Um, we get some I would clarity imagine, around that. Yeah, I would imagine we'd hit that by the end of the year. So at the rate we're going, Beck, did you? Sorry. Yes, it'll be general operating expenses of my four departments: so wellness, um, HR, workplace health and safety, and L and D. So just as things come through. Okay. So does it pick up the workplace health and safety operating costs? Yep. Yes. That just picks up all the workplace stuff, yeah. health and safety operating costs, does it? Yeah. Yep. What's that? Yeah, I'm just having a look now. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Just while we're looking at that, Mr. CEO, the internal plan charges is that we have our HR staff, our PNC staff mobilised moving around the region, I guess that would pick up our workplace health and safety officers as well? Very, very heavily workplace health and safety because they have to have a vehicle and they have to move about uh, as, as, as you have. Um, if there is um, uh, people and culture staff that move, but yeah, it, again, learning and development to get around the different offices. Um, but yeah, it picks up again, um, all those all those sections, but very, I won't, well, very heavily. I'm probably being a bit flower with my language, but there is a significant proportion of that in workplace health and safety and getting those guys mobilised around the region. Thank you. Catering, Mr. CEO. We've spent nine eight two nine that year to date. Let's see, I might just come back. Um, yeah, GM Jarvis, you put your light on. You've got some information you, on that, Mr. Mayor. General Ops. Thank you, Manager um, Kerry. We have looked at detail, and it um, it's a confidential legal matter that we might have to go into confidential at your discretion to discuss that at a later okay. time. Okay. So, shall we leave the budget as is, yes. and that can be provided thank to councillors? Uh, later, thank if it's a matter of confidence, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so the catering, Mr. CEO, is that about where we expect that to land? Yeah, Mayor, and we do when we run um, uh, staff training and gathering, and then you have uh, the staff Christmas function comes out of here, so each year, so um, you would have the uh, um, the long the the recognition of service awards. So. Um, yeah, so actually it's, it's been pretty good that we've been able to hold it as it is because with those functions, um, they 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 um, get supplied all out of this budget, all these budgets. Yeah, we are going to have to watch this budget, this um, people and culture materials budget, because 221 year to date out of 228. Um, so we are going to have to watch that for the next four months, aren't we? We certainly don't want to see us go over budget. Um, so we'll have to just keep a nice tight belt around that. Uh, but having said that, certainly... We don't invest a lot in recognising or rewarding our staff, do we? So I don't think that's uh, over the top in terms of what happens in the corporate world, that's for sure. Um, one, of, one of the things, Mayor, is one of the big chunks of that is the workers' comp. So I would imagine it'll, it'll sort of start to come back a little bit too. So having that payment in one hit, that's a big proportion of that budget. 190000 in work cover, yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillors, are we comfortable with the – that was very far. Over the page, uh, if not – Please feel free to jump in. But over the page, we've got uh, services now is the last section for P&C. Uh, and we had $30,000 last year for consultants. This year, that's down to 17000 So a budget reduction of 13000 uh, The 17 we uh, we'll get you to talk us through that shortly, Mr. CEO. And the 4000 for contractors has gone up to 15000 So a total from 34 down to 32 for consultants and contractors. Thanks, Mr. CEO. Yeah, Mayor, when we uh, had the workshop, there was a discussion about, um, so if we neaten that up and just make it the 30 neat between the two, it's a little bit hard. So we've got EBA with, L um, most likely we will work with LJQ. We haven't engaged yet, but when we get to our EBA negotiations, we will need a, a third party to work with us. So. I suppose you can use the term consultant for them, but they're really they're, they're industrial advice that that's required is to help us through that process. Um, other, we've moved uh, the investigations um, 
um, if we have to engage uh, the OIA and other ones have uh, well, approved but recommended uh, external investigators that, that we utilise. So they would come out of those two line items depending on the nature of the engagement. And if so, we neaten it up. And again, it's a little bit, ideally, if you have none for the year, you'll do well by the EBA. Uh, if you have 10 investigations, they'll go over. So uh, a nominal allocation of 30,000 should, should be consistent with what we've spent previously. And, um, but certainly, yeah, the, the only one that that we can really solidly plan for is um, LJQ, barring that we expect we will have investigations during the year. Yeah, thanks, Mr. CEO. Quest Any comments or questions on that, councillors? Comfortable with that? Yep. Okay. Well, that's uh, we've worked through every light on now. That's that's everything. Um, so I might just let councillors. Uh, sorry, Councillor Duff. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in terms of. Um, of this process, is it possible for um, the into the future if this budget could be up on the screen and we could work through and, and put the savings beside it as we go, so we know what we're actually adopting at the end? Oh, for the savings or the additions or whatever. Yeah, no, no, we can certainly do that, Councillor. That'd be no trouble at all. Thank you. We'd probably have to bring you up to the front, Kerry. And so we'll just on screen, would we? Um, we um, yeah, as we as we get into the more substantive ones, uh, yeah, I would I would think that would be a good plan. So sorry, uh, committee, we have um, the recommendation that the committee receive the proposed 2022-23 draft budget as amended for the executive department and provide guidance for inclusion in the continued preparation of the full South Burnett Regional Council 22-23 annual budget. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, thank you. Seconder, Councillor Potter. Any speakers? Okay, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour, carry unanimously. Thank you all. I'll now call the meeting to a close at 12 midday sharp yeah